sit back and relax. We have this Train Kickers podcast. I'm Dave, and along with my co-hosts Stan and Steve, we're going to take you all around the world to mention Wargaming. On tonight's episode, we're going to go through the 14th Legion for Horus Heresy, the Death Guard, and we're going to go through our deep dive of them. We're going to discuss everything about them and save the Primarch. We're going to do those at a later point. And the Rites of War are going to be a separate video that you can find out around the same time as this one, within a day or two of it. Um, just as I usually say at the end, though I'll say at the beginning as well, just in case you don't listen to the very last minute, we do want to thank everyone who does listen. And whatever way you listen to us, whether it's on any form of a podcast or whether it's on YouTube, we just ask that you help us share that out, subscribe if it's on YouTube, anything like that, because it really does help us a lot. With the content we've been putting out, we've seen a lot of growth, and that's been honestly really, really great for us. All right. And without any further ado, now on to the show. All right, and we are here tonight to be going over the 14th Legion, Death Guard. Um, this is in our series ever going on forward of going through each of these legions in the Horse Heresy for 2.0. Um, just as we've done before, we're going to discuss everything about the legion. We are going to do Primarchs later, and the Rights of War will be a separate video that, depending on when you listen to this, will be out either the day after or is already out. Um, the idea for this episode is releasing in September, so shortly thereafter you'll see that. Um, as we've done so far for all these videos, we are going to start with the fluff, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. For the fluff of these guys, since I am exceedingly up, what I've realized is the more that people talk or um, leave comments on the YouTube and I discuss back and forth with them, you know, we'll mention some little things and people will give a lot of feedback related to this. Oh, you know, in this book you find out this or, or things, sorts of pieces, and I realize I'm one super behind on the books, unbelievably so. But also, there's a lot of information there that is actually just very interesting. Since I don't have any of that available, just going to give a very brief overview of what they talk about from the main book. So, for these guys, they were originally known as the Dust Raiders. They were um, Dust Raiders for about a hundred years before Matarian was found. Um, their style of battle does change a little bit before as opposed to after. Um, so they originally came from, uh, recruited from Albia. Um, they, w even at that time, were known to be just very stubborn, very methodical. They get a little bit more, maybe what's the best way to put it, a little bit more, I don't want to say the word fanatical, but I guess maybe more destructive later with Mortarion. They weren't necessarily known for building and holding before but through the talk you know he was the one who really pushed a lot more of chemical weapons virus weapons essentially pure and utter destruction but um they were a big uh, proponent of essentially night fighting or attacking at dusk which is why they call themselves the dusk raiders um it was actually worded in the book that on more than one occasion when it was known that they would be the ones attacking as the sun would start to go down the defenders of the world would actually leave um for fear of what would happen to them um is that they were you know stubborn you know prideful going through all of that they end up finding uh mortarion unlike a lot of the other legions who were very pleased to be reunited with their Primarch. It really gives the feeling here that neither side was necessarily ever so uh, so looking forward to it. You know, he saw them essentially as a tool in order to, you know, exact the punishment upon worlds, um, aliens, anything like that that wasn't um, in terms of for the Imperium where they might have, at least originally, it seems like they maybe considered him you know, a little bit more, maybe the best way to put it is, is not necessarily dark, but a little more uh, foreboding is maybe a good way to put it. Um, they eschewed um, badges, hierarchy, anything like that. They much more of um, line infantry, much more of the way to judge your status is by how banged up and bad looking your armor is because that means you've been out there surviving for longer you know they are a legion that believes fully in you should be as self um you, you know able to be self-sufficient as possible you should only be you know restocked when it's absolutely necessary and the number of losses we take do not matter as long as we get the job done um, it mentions in the heretic book that at the time of the heresy, they had about 95,000 Marines 
and 25,000 of them were culled for being uh, loyalists, which when we get to Garrow, I'm sure Dan will have plenty to say about it at that point, since I know that's one of his favorite characters, as he said before. Um, that's about as deep as I want to get into it, because I don't want to necessarily say anything that ends up being too off the kilter. So, we are on to their trait. Um, who would like to take their trait? Oh, nab it. Um, okay, go for it. Their trait is remorseless. It's actually one of the longer ones, too, but it's, it's, a, it's a simple one, but it's actually super long. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, I didn't even notice that. So, a model with this special rule that does not have the cavalry unit type or artillery unit subtype ignores any modifiers or restrictions on moving during the movement phase, including modifiers imposed by terrain or restrictions from rules such as pinning, which would normally stop them from moving. As long as the model does not run or make use of another alternative form of movement, such as activating a jump pack, disembarking, or deploying via deep strike. Furthermore, as long as the model has not run or used another alternative form of movement, such as they mentioned above, it is counted as stationary when making shooting attacks until the at uh, the start. Oh my god! Until the start of the controlling player's next turn, this special rule does not affect whether or, or not. Oh my, this special rule does not affect whether or not a model may make a charge, and does not allow a mo and does not allow models with a vehicle unit type to ignore the effects of a mobilized result on the vehicle damage table. But it does allow a model with the vehicle unit type to move even when under the effects of crew stun result on the vehicle damage table. So. A lot of words. What this boils down to is two basic bullet points. The first bullet point is that you ignore any modifiers or restrictions to move into the movement phase. This is difficult terrain, um, which gives you, I think, I believe, a minus two to your movement. Yep, flat minus two. Um, yep, and pinning, which is massive. You can still move when you're pinned. Um, you still because you stop the snap fire, but you can still move when pinned, which is massive. As long as you do not run or you don't do some other alternate form of movement, such as activating a jump pack or something like that. Um, disembarking from deep. So I can give you a whole list. Um, the second major, major bullet point, which I think is even more important than the last one, is that you count as stationary. If you, as long as you don't do the alternate movement or run, you count as stationary, meaning that in the shooting phase, in the preceding shooting phase, and also in Overwatch, and your opponent's turn, Overwatch, you can oh. shoot your heavy... Let's let's Overwatch. You always do count as stationary. Not well, true, I'm as per the that. rules. Oops, but essentially, um, when you move, you can still shoot your heavy weapons and not snap fire, which is a pretty big bonus. This also means that you can move and Fury of the Legion as well, because you count as stationary. I mean, um, it, it mentions that you know this is a legion that really thinks about being on foot. You know, maybe they'll cross the long distances and transports and all, but a lot of on foot legion, it works. And, and they talk about how, you know, they much prefer heavy units. They do use a lot of dreadnoughts. They use a lot of terminators, things like that. They use things that essentially are relentless for a better stake. So it gives the rest of their guys a form of something like relentless. Um, just at least the moving and shooting part. And what's nice is that means you can actually hide your heavy units or heavy support units that. You know, you don't want them seen, especially if you're going second, because they might be the target that someone wants to take out. You could hide them behind the piece of the train because they can walk out and still fire as normal. Mm -hmm. um, or yeah. if the ranges aren't right, they can actually start moving. I've had issues with ranges or line of sight um, so far with some of my Volkite weapons, the ones that are heavy, and just ha having to snap is rough. You know, I, th I think for these guys, because these guys are currently my ally legion, the other ones that I'm working on, now that they've finally... Next week, the pre-orders go up for all the other heavy weapons. These guys are getting a few of those in, like, giant man squads. So that way they can literally just be standing behind a building. Now it's my turn. They walk to the other side of the building and just flatten whatever they want. Yeah, no, it, it's their... I, I, and I, I'm glad you mentioned Volkite. I'm also going to yes. mention like, missile launchers. Absolutely. Um, because the two of those... I know that people are always going to run to, like, LAS cannons, but those are super expensive. Those, those rack up points. Missile launchers are generally cheap. Volkite is generally cheap. A lot of shots with the Volkite, and missile launchers are just good. Um, and just to see them move around with a heavy weapon, and Volkite is just a scary thing to see. Um, you know, you put 10 in the squad, that's what, 50 shots? Do they, they carry um, five that, shots? No, Volkite, that, right? uh, if you're doing the heavy Volkite weapon, yes. If you're doing mm -hmm. the specialist yeah, but... one that is... 
Um, also the same sort of profile than MP3. But yeah, between 30 to 50 shots, depending on which way you arm them. That's insane. And then you can shoot normally. It's, it's, it's insane. I, and then the Fury of the Legion part is also like just great because yes. you can reposition, you can move, and still toss out an obscene amount of bolter shots. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I, I this Fury is a very... on the move is nice. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Yeah, always um, getting two shots if you can actually get a target does a lot. Bolters aren't exceedingly damaging when you are shooting one shot at someone okay i need you know let's say it's you know knife or something like that okay maybe i need fours or maybe even threes to hit but i probably need fours to wound or worse but when you're starting to double the output you will absolutely start getting to them mm -hmm. honestly i like the idea of I, I need to get another rhino for this but some sort of and decided what one of the heavier squads you know, set in a rhino, rushing up to get to a different position, somewhere that maybe gives them a bit more cover from the enemy, they can just walk out and just fire. Or, you yeah. know, at least it gives them a little bit more survivability to help me get them to the spot that I may want. Because range isn't always the issue, but terrain or your opponent knowing what you can do and therefore positioning smartly to try to lower the output of your units and all. Just It's just a straightforward good ability. No, yeah, it's... And it's funny. It's a it's a long one. It, it's it's because they have like to cover one. all their bases. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's a very straightforward one, which I like. You're saying, you know Steve. I mean? Um. Oh, also, it just makes them. It's not the most fluffy thing, but it makes them one of the more mobile um, vehicle lists. True. Because stationary vehicles get to fire all the weapons at full effect for the most part. If you go up to half speed, you're losing some of that effect. If you go full speed, you're losing almost all of your effect. These guys are zooming across the table. They're faster than white scars with their tanks. Talk about uh, actual effective combat speed. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So uh, these guys love Sikorin tanks and Predator tanks and things like that because they can just zoom and boom. True. Yeah, because then they you still are have... faster than white scars. Yeah, you still have options of ordnance or destroyer weapons. That's the big thing. So for anyone who's not aware, because current vehicles that are out in plastic, and I, you may have some other stuff, but I'm essentially counting plastic for the moment. There is no weapon that would be a problem, but if you go at combat speed, if you have ordnance or destroyer weapons, then you're running into issues. These guys do not. All right. I think we are good to move on to their reaction, which, Steve, you can take if you like. Uh, sure. You don't have to. If you don't want to, it's okay. No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I could do it. I could do it. I know how to read. I'm a big boy. All right. He's going to so mess Death up Guard's the seventh word. Watch. <laughs> Death Guard advanced reaction. Remorseless advance. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player shooting phase. The enemy unit declares a shooting attack during friendly unit under control. All miles that are targeted gain feel no pain 4 plus against hits right, inflicted by the shooting attack and pass any more outlook rating checks they have to make as a result of it. Afterwards, the unit can move in any direction up to seven inches, obeying all the normal moves. Uh, oh my god. I was right. I was wrong <laughs> when, but I was right <laughs> on the idea. Oh man. Yeah, it's the normal, seven, man. It's the seven threw me off. I was thinking too hard about it. <laughs> so you get shot, you get a four up for the pain, you ignore morale and pinning, and then you move seven seven inches. Why is that so hard to say? Seven inches. Seven inches. I don't know. Um, shouldn't be that hard to say. Um, and they obey all normal rules for making a move. So slow by terrain and all that, all that good stuff. Not them. Not them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't care about it. Oh yeah, that. that's right. They're Death Guard. Yeah. <laughs> for you lessers. Yes. So, I mean, what, four plus feel no pain and you get to move seven inches? <laughs> what? This doesn't... Stack, does it? No, right? No. This doesn't stack with like apothecaries and shit, right? Uh, most or... rules on Feel No Pain's max to a four. Okay. Usually okay, the way yeah. they write it is like to a maximum of four. I don't know if the apothecary is actually worded that way. If someone wants to look that up. I could find it. Yeah. If you want to look that up, we'll talk about it. Um, this, I, I played a learning game with someone who was building up Death Guard and you know, he's learning the first time, so I want to, you know, help him figure out when when is good times to use certain things like this. I ended up only having his terminators to be able to shoot at, so I'm taking some shots there, fully knowing, okay, he should he should be using this. And 
he might just remember that. I said, you know, this is the perfect time for this. I'm like, because it's your cataphract determinators. You're actually going to move further than you're normally ever allowed. And if I happen to get something through, because it wasn't uh, an instant death weapon, if I get something through, you have a four up save after that. You're going to probably take zero wounds and you get a free move out of it. This, it's a nice and simple. And um, the, it's honestly, I mean, the field no pain is nice. Don't get me wrong. The field no pain is very nice. I like, you know, the ability to move, therefore, in any direction is exceptionally good, I think. Did you mm -hmm. find it, Dan? Yes. Okay. All my, um, I'm just going to skip the first part because it just gains the feel no pain. Yeah. Units that include more than one Narthosium do not stack the feel no pain special rule. Yeah. So. This is not a uh, Narthosium. No. Yeah. So does that stack? No. What does the rest say? Does it say anything different? Oh, the rest is just your artillery subtype. You don't so, get, no. get it. So no, it doesn't stack because Pride of the Legion specifically says if you Pride have an, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, heart. My apologies. Yes, heart of the legion says if you have it, then it increases by one. Got it. Okay. I'll check that to be sure. But I'm pretty sure that's the wording on heart because I know that's where it starts. Uh, sorry, it stacks, and it stacks because so heart of the, of the legion wording. will stack. Yes. Is it to max of four though? Let's take a look. I'm, uh, no. I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at heart of the legion. Yeah. No, I'm looking at it right now. So it gives them a six up and stubborn. If the model already has a variant, they get to increase it by plus one if at least half the model's within six inches. Um, it does not give a max on that. So, no, you could actually get a three up on that if you're heart of the Legion as well. Yeah. If you're close well, enough. you've got to be half on an objective. Well, yes. half within six inches of an objective. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, and you have yeah, to have heart Unless of the you're Legion. playing a Deathwing player who really loves their right of war, there's no guarantee there's an objective. Yeah, I know. Um, but still, but it, it's amazing when you get it. That's a three up, feel no pain. Yeah, <laughs> a three up, three up, hell yeah. Yeah, exceedingly unlikely that you have it ever so much, but it is useful. That is good. Yeah, that is that is funny though. I did want to point that out because if there is an objective on the table and you have your tax squad with an apothecary on there, good fucking luck shifting that well, tax squad. Oh, yeah, well, true, but it's once. True. After that, true. it's a four, yeah. which I mean, a, a, a three up, four up is good as well. That can still be. I mean, it, keep in mind though, it is at least, it's still a feel no pain, so there is absolutely ways it gets avoided. If it would instant death oh, you, you, you get nothing. Out, of course. But you at least yeah. still get the move. That's just funny. I, I was thinking about. It. I'm like, wait, can they get to a thrift? That's insane. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's it funny. doesn't that's actually. Like certain that. other things put a cap. This one does not. I was checking. Um, I know there's other ones that talk about a cap, but not on hard. I Legion, will point one. out because I did see this online as a question on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, and I had to look at it, and I wanted just to. So it says the unit may make a move in any direction up to seven inches. That doesn't mean that yeah. if you're a cataphract guy, you can move seven. You still move six. Why wouldn't you move seven? It says you can move up to seven inches. Up okay. to seven uh, inches. Obeying all the so normal rules for, for, for making a move. Why yeah, wouldn't so a cataphract guy move six inches. Do they gain the extra inch? I think so. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Oh, then maybe I was wrong. Because I thought it said up to seven it does. inches. So I'm yeah, like, oh. they could make a move. Yeah, they make a move. So when it doesn't move, say they make yeah. their movement stat. They make a move of up to seven inches. So they can move seven inches. That's interesting then. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. No, then I'm glad I brought that up because I was thinking that, you know, cat, you know cataphract are six inches. So yeah. that's where they move. Yeah. Oh, okay. They, that's pretty cool. There's nothing. Okay. Now, they could FAQ it the other way. Sure. There's nothing in there that tells, that says to me it's off of their movement stat. Because otherwise, it would say you could you know, make a move based on your movement stat up to a blank amount or something. It'd be more complicated, but that would clarify. They just say, you can move up to seven inches. Very true. They say up to yeah, because they're not forcing you to actually move a full seven if you only wanted a few to do whatever yeah, it is that you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. But no, I would say yeah, that's not okay. affected. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that's spicy. Yeah. I like that. It, it plays very well into this idea of being slow and methodical and just advancing up. It's especially good on anything in Terminator armor because even... You know, even Tartarus, okay, they can run, but I still want them close to the thing they want to fight because they probably want to get into close combat. Anything that moves me forward is useless. I'm sorry, it's useful. My apologies. I was reading the name Remorseless, so I said put a less at the end of that. All right, chugging straight along. We are on to some Warlord traits. Does someone have a preference? We got a trader and then some regulars. I mean, I'm I like to take the trader cool. ones. All right. Yeah, they all look pretty I cool. I have fun with those. Yeah, that's, that is true. You're a trader. Go for it. Hell yeah. 
So uh, first among Warlord traits, we have the Reaper's Visage, which is the trader-only trait. Um, let's see. If an enemy unit has at least one model from 12 inches of Warlord with this trait, you reduce the leadership of all models in that unit by two whenever making leadership checks, morale checks, or regrouping. Unless that unit also has an independent character or a Primarch. In addition, you get an extra reaction in the opposing assault phase, as long as the guy's not dead. Essentially, it's a fake fear. Yeah. Which ignores things that ignore fear, but is but ignored by weird. anything with an attached independent character. So here's the weird part. I, it's, it doesn't ignore stubborn, but it ignores fearless. Well, no, no, no. Stubborn ignores this because stubborn ignores all saying, modifiers. It doesn't, so stubborn, or, let me rephrase that. I'll, I'll reverse what I said. Stubborn ignores this, but I don't think fearless ignores this. Whereas well, fearless fear, auto passes, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're not taking those tests. Essentially, for all intents and purposes. Any, oh, so, so it's, I mean, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. I don't think it's the most amazing thing ever, but I like it. It's my I think really this will absolutely come into play, and you'll get good mileage out of it if you use it. If you have... Side note. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, you, you have to think of leadership when you um, set defenses. I always forget the name of the reaction. But you have to, you have to um, That's a take a leadership. Line. Oh, hold, hold the line. line. Yes, hold, yeah, the line. hold the line. Hold the line. Yes. You have to take a leadership, so minus two leadership when you have to do hold the line is pretty big. Yeah, and there's and if you actually caused fear, if you had a way to cause fear, I don't think they really do, but or if something nearby was causing fear, it does stack because this is not fear. This is a separate thing. It's neat. I guess uh, I want to reserve judgment on any of it until we see the rest of them. Dan, you want to talk about I witches? Can't do it all three, but I'll take witches. I'll take witches. Do it. So, uh, the warlord with this trait gains plus one to his toughness. Ooh. <laughs> that, I'm gonna that already was great. <laughs> Sorry. A warlord with this trait gains plus one to his toughness and weapon skill when locked in combat with any unit that includes at least one model with the psyker And this is why we okay. always finish sentences, because you got really excited, people. and then you see it has to be against no, the psyker. No, I, no, I'm still, no, no, no. I am still saying, I am still saying, ooh. All right. Because plus one, I don't know, I'll get to why in a second. Okay. All friendly units composed entirely of models with the Legion of Stardust Death Guard special rule, and with at least one model within 12 inches of the Warlord gains six up in vulnerable save against any hits inflicted with psychic weapons, psychic powers, Pearl of the Warp. In addition, any army whose Warlord has this trait may uh, may make an additional reaction during the opposing's assault phase. All right, so you get an extra assault phase. All right, so the reason I said ooh, okay. even though it's a Psycho, I'm still, I'm still saying okay. ooh. Because I can see this run as a loyalist warlord trait. Because, right. and let me explain, um, two reasons. The first reason is, I think librarians, I think not a lot of people have librarians built or painted because no one really used them in 1.0. Okay. Unless you were Thousand Sons, because they weren't really that great. I think more and more people are starting to realize how good librarians are, especially with like the denying of reactions or the plus one toughness to the unit. And I think we're going to see more and more and more psychers on the battlefield. Um, not to mention that, if I remember correctly, demons also had psychers. So there's, I know the demons of the Runestorm rules haven't been released yet, but that's just a side note. Um, I like this because I think we're going to see... Off the basis that we're going to see more psychers on the battlefield. And if you're a Loyalist Thousand Sons player and you go to an event you're probably going to run into a Thousand Suns player. So this is almost a kind of direct contradiction right. to the Thousand so Suns it, player. Who if can, you're a Loyalist Death Guard player, you're going to run into a Thousand Suns player. You said Thousand Suns twice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're Loyalist Death Guards, are you? So it's, it's more like, is it the best one? No, absolutely Far not. From it. I think Reaper's Vision is a lot better. Yeah. But, it, like, if you know the event you're going to, you know there's going to be a Thousand Suns player, because it's always kind of pre-thing. Or it, this kind of depends on your local as well. Because you might have someone who takes three li librarians. I don't know. And Can you take three? No, because you still need a no, Praetor to unlock stuff. Well, you, you, if you want to unlock Rights of War and stuff, oh, you, you don't, don't oh. have to take a Praetor. Oh, okay, so let's say two librarians. Someone might take two librarians. for. So this this work. I like it. All right. Not the best. But like Here, here's why it's fanciful garbage. Um, oh. This is useful if you know ahead of time. And are building your list because you know your friend is bringing psychers or he's playing Thousand Suns or he's playing Demons or whatever it may be. If you're just, you know, 
I'm making my list. I'm going to bring it and I'm going to go to game night and I'm going to have some fun, play some games. De you know, de again, depending on your particular meta or anything like that. But then you're thinking about potentially meta gaming and all. It could do absolutely nothing other than give you a reaction. If they don't have a Psyker, you get absolutely nothing for it. Uh, at least some of the other ones give you options. The other one, Reaper's Visage, okay. Well, if they have a lot of yeah. characters, maybe I don't get it, but not every unit's going to have an independent character. I'll, I'll get something out of it. Maybe I won't get a lot, but I'll have something. If you don't bring us, if your opponent doesn't bring a Psyker or isn't, say, an army that is Psykers, you have no no ability here. That's my problem. Can we that. also um, Can we also mention the sweet, sweet irony that this is probably Mortarian. Let me see. Uh, Mortarian is, yep, yep. Uh, this is something to do with Mortarian because Mortarian absolutely loathed witches and psychers, yep. and he actually became one. So just pour one for the sweet, sweet irony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it talks about how at the Council of uh, Nikaia, he was you know, vehemently opposed to having any form of psychers and sanctioning it greatly. And then in 40k, he's a large demon prince that uses psychic powers. Interesting. Uh, when when you're <laughs> when you know when the demon hood takes over, you don't necessarily have as much say in what happens to you anymore. They could have even done it just to twist it. Are you okay? So Dan likes it. I I don't. Steve, do you actually have any feelings wait, about wait, this? Wait, wait. One? I like it if you know ahead of time. So That's you like caveat. it if you're list building against your opponent. Well, no. If you wow. go to an event, oh wow. Oh, okay, no, I wasn't that negative. But if you're going to an event, like if you're going to an event and you're playing Loyalist Death Card, and you know, you know, there's a thousand souls player, so it'll um, maybe come up in the one game you maybe have against that guy. Well, it'll be a fun game if you happen to play <laughs> him, <laughs> and all your other games so you don't a, even necessarily. Have I didn't say it was trade. a good war about trade. I said I liked it. All right. I don't always like the good things, like strawberry I, daiquiris. <laughs> I'm not convinced on this one at all um it's cool and it's fluffy but it does literally nothing if your opponent doesn't make certain army list writing choices mm -hmm. aside from an extra assault face reaction it, it's a miss for me dog yeah. the other part is you also have to get to that unit because it's when they're locked in combat if you don't get oh. into combat with that psycho unit you get no bonus if you never reach it to wait, that, wait, you wait. get no bonus Wait, 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 wait. Did you? You read it. Doesn't read it. say enemy psyker. No, no, it doesn't say enemy psyker. It says locked in combat. Uh huh. What, you can't okay. be locked with a friendly unit. Oh, okay, you can't have like a, a psyker in your unit, and they're in that combat. No, because you're not locked in combat with it. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Don't make me get out the book. Yeah, I, 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 hold on, because. I, I, Okay. No, I, I hate no, to do we this. know what you're going to say. Your unit has a psyker in it, therefore you get the bonus. Yeah. Um, even if so, I still don't but like that's it. That's super gamey. No, I was say that's also super gamey, and I would not allow it because the whole point of the thing is you hate witches. Like, that's yeah. that's beyond gamey. That's like next level. Fuck the fluff. Like, th that would actually annoy me. But I, I would say there. No. And here's the reason I would say no. I would say no, no. Not even for that. I don't care about the gaminess. I would say no because it says you're locked on combat with any unit that includes a model that has that. The enemy uh -huh. is the unit. You are not the unit. I don't know. Because uh -huh. like I, I think it boils down to that locked in combat. You're not locked in combat with yourself. Yeah. This isn't... I'm just laughing because I'm, I, I, in my head, my, my 40K brain that wants to break everything was like, hmm... God, I gotta break that. I gotta eventually like just play for fun. It's that simple. <laughs> just play for fun. <laughs> Lots years of, of combat playing... is all about enemy models, my yep. dude. I know. Years of playing. Years of playing 40k tournaments as years of playing 40k tournaments in yeah, our you, area. You, you, specific thing is yes, yeah, so yes. The other true. thing to keep in mind is even if you go to a tournament, you don't have to be cutthroat. You can still just go and have fun. Most people, when you go to a tournament, one person's going to win. Now Everyone else loses. Seat. It's that simple. Everyone, every other person loses the tournament. So go in and have fun. Because most likely, you're losing the tournament. Yeah. Especially if it's a big tournament. Nova just, just happens. Nova was just this weekend. Every single person who goes to Nova loses, except one person. Come on. So I hate to derail just slightly, but just slightly real quick for like two minutes. They had a Nova Heresy tournament, uh, correct? No, we talked about it. So LVO is having the tournament. LVO. They did okay, have good. Heresy so events. What, uh, um, there's like a crusade event. Yet. I know okay. I, I saw some of it on Facebook. People were talking about it, but no, LVO's having the competitive. 
Got it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I want because I'm like I'm curious now. It makes me want to look it up for the next yeah. podcast. Well, we'll t- we'll talk about all it right. on, a, on a separate thing one of these times. On a set comes, yeah. comes. Um, all, right. all right, third world lore trait. Let's see if any of these are uh, good. Uh, Blood of Barbarous. Any hits that have rending, murder strike, poison, or flesh bane special rule allocated to a warlord with this trait, or any death or any model with the death guard special rule in the unit he joins. So him and his unit. Only gain the benefit of those special rules on a D6 roll of a 6 instead of the listed value. So his unit can only be rendered on a 6, murder strike on a 6, poisoned, or flesh baned on a 6. Um, and then they get an extra reaction during the shooting phase, which is useful because that's when your bonus reaction is. Um, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I, I still might think of some of, take one of the um, core rule ones, but of these options, I think this one's the best. If we think of what you're worried about, your warlord's um, your warlord's going to be in a two up armor. Let's face it that way. Whether or not he's a terminator, yes. sure, but he's two up armor safe. So things that worry him: rending, poisoned, or potentially flesh bane, murder, a strike to instant death him out. You are safer. Sometimes not by much, but potentially much safer versus like the stuff point. that you're worried about. I, I don't see how this one doesn't yeah. win the Death Guard 3. No, I like, yeah, this is the top one for me. Only, you know what I'm thinking too, because, um, again, you play Loyalist Death Guards. Um, uh, I know you play, like, for example, you play Josh's World yeah. Leaders. He takes his yeah. um, Warlord with the two, I always pronounce this stupid sword wrong, the Phalax sure. Blades. Um, they rend on a four up. And that's how yeah. he kills you. You know, he just tosses like nine attacks at you at rending. Um, no more. Them only rending on a six, though. Ugh. Yeah, it, it takes them down yeah. to essentially <laughs> a, a normal style sword or something like that. Again, it's yeah. not always going to matter because you might not have a lot of rending that's coming at you or murder strike, all those things. But this is what's going to really lay the wounds on you slash your squad. Because notice, it's anyone else he joins. So your squad is also a lot more survivable against the things that they're probably concerned about. Because they're probably yeah. a two-up style save, whether it's Terminator or Artificer or whatever it may be. It does protect the squad a lot, too. Yeah. Like, if you're going against your, um, oh, God, Synobiums. Yes, because right? the murder strike on a five-up like, change might, to a like, six. You have, like, for example, if you have, if you have that really big, beefy unit, the one we were talking about, the most expensive, Death Shrouds, yeah, Death right? Terminators. Is it Death Shrouds? Yeah. If you're taking Death Shrouds, right, and they're super expensive, I think that they're battle-hardened yes, one. I'm not going to look down. No, we'll they're battle oh, Okay. But yeah, their big bane is instant death, right? You don't, you, they don't want to be instant death out, uh, or mur- murder strike. I apologize. Um, and this would really hurt. So yeah, no, I like. Yeah, this is a really. I think this or, is the or, even, or even the other things. What kills terminators is either things that can outright kill them in one shot, like murder strike would be for them, or what makes you just roll saves. You you will fit. Fa- you're statistically failing oh on a six. So if you make me roll 20, 30 saves, I'm absolutely going to start you failing and losing hurts? people. Yeah. You know what? As a mechanical mm-hmm. player, one of the um, flamers we have is Fleshbane and Torrent. Right? It's actually one of the, it's, it's expensive as fuck. Yeah. But it's Fleshbane and Torrent AP three. So it doesn't matter against Terminators. But the Fleshbane, you can lay down five. You know flamer templates out 12 inches and rotate it any which way you want um, except it's not can't be closer to but um you can get some like a lot of hits wounded on twos um this really hurts i like yeah. this a lot yeah the more i yeah. think about it the more i like the, this, this one lot. is the good one oh yeah the other ones do it if, if you like the fluff if you like the reasoning but even then it might be hard to get a good use out of it if you don't get to use this one much that's not a feel bad because that means that your your squad had good survivability already against the stuff that was coming at you. Uh, any other thoughts on the Warlord traits? Okay. Uh, oh. So we are going to be skipping Rights of War for the moment. We're going to have a video I said about a day or two after that's going to go over the two Rights of War. Uh, we'll mention them a little bit as needed if we're talking about something in particular, but for theirs, they're absolutely fine to talk about later once we get through the rest of this. We are on to the armory, which has three things. We are three people. Who wants what? Oh, man. They're so, I, I, you don't take the power sites. I'm going to take them at the end. Someone can take the really cool alchem munitions. <laughs> I'll do it because it's real fast. All right. Because it's pretty simple. Um, essentially, if you have a flamer-type weapon, you can exchange it for an alchem flamer-type weapon. So if you have a hand flamer, it's an alchem pistol. 
uh, flamer for alchem flamer, heavy flamer for heavy alchem flamer. Um, they it, essentially whatever it is, you can replace it. Um, the same actually holds true for combi as well. You can take an alchem combi flamer's secondary weapon if it's their combi choice. It's a minor, so anywhere it says flamer, replace with alchem in there. Um, they all also have. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's the same profile, uh, at least for strength and I AP. Was yeah. Yes, it is. You literally yep. spoke my words because I was yes. comparing it with the Excel sheet I have. And yes, it is exactly it is the, the same. same base profile, just with the bonus flesh bane, and it gets hot. And it gets yeah. hot. Um, the, uh, the actually the other thing would be the heavy is the heavy flamer assault as well. Normally, okay. Yes. So they're yes. literally identical except they're flesh bane and they get hot. Um, when so originally before I realized I wanted to do some death guard guys, I was I was working on my um. My special weapon sprues and making my squads and i'm like oh flamers i'm never going to use these things i have flamers that are plasma based you and then i was like oh wait i'm doing death card oh yeah i totally need a squad of these guys yeah, no. that'll be fun they're amazing i'm gonna lose some probably to the gets hot but still oh yeah because you're one, yeah, wound. one wound. Oh, but but it's hit? not a point it's increase. A mark wound. and no it's not and, it's and free. one wound if it's attack guy if this is on your you know terminator sergeant or something like that or someone with a minor combi who has multiple wounds then you're still potentially fine but um yeah no this is and i do mm -hmm. believe uh it's flush man's always it's a two, two up. up right yeah flush man's always a two up yeah so you get like a good two three flamers or um i don't know why i said two or oh because i was thinking veteran squads um but you got like a good like five flamers from a support squad in there that's a lot of <laughs> wounding on two yeah. up hits that's a hell of a lot or even an Overwatch D three. That's 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 a nasty yeah. boy. Actually, I'm checking For right what? now. Give me a second here. A automata. It's either I can't remember if it's Automata or Cybernetica mm -hmm. that get the uh... yes. So you have to reroll successful. Yeah. So even against Automata, mm -hmm. Dave, you have to reroll successes. It works the same way as Dreadnoughts. You're still wounded on yeah, Dreadnoughts. Yeah, you exactly. Gotta successes. You're still wounded on two. So this is, I feel like this is even good against, like, Dreadnought. Uh, no. Dreadnought's not so much because they're yeah. two-up save, um, but can, can, uh, um, Mechanicum is a three-up. Yeah. So I can see this being used sure. against Mechanicum. I don't, I would not charge a squad with Alchem Flamers with my Myrmidons. Absolutely fucking sure. not. So if you happen to live in a spot where someone actually has a Mechanicum, it will matter there. It can. I, again, I always view yeah. it a little bit more Marine v. Marine, at least in the beginning, because that's, you know, the, the, the common army yeah. is the army in plastic, what people have. When Mechanicus gets exactly. a plastic release at it's some point, like other armies. then it'll actually be much more of a thing. But make them roll exactly. saves. I mean, even so, but even so, yeah, this just makes me roll saves. Like, I'm imagining demons. Like, I remember, old, I don't know what demons are going to happen, but the big thing with demons was just make me roll saves and they fucking vanish yeah. in thin air. Um, this is this is fucking terrifying. Um, and then even custodies, like if custodies retain their T five, and you just wound me on twos. Ugh, I don't even want to chart. That's what five D three. That's but an that's average before of the gets ten. Hot. Average so remember, you roll the gets hot. Well, I know. I get true. Oh, that's right. right. You can't. Yeah, you can't well, yeah, shoot yeah. it. So You're there's right, a chance. Right. It's so hard it's to map here. out exactly. Still. Yeah. Still a hesitation. I, absolutely. I mean, it's good, but. If you're going against Marines, yeah. which almost everyone will be, they're actually very good. <laughs> um, I mean, because if you want to go into special armies, if you're going against Solar Auxilia, some of these things could be beaten armor. So, all right, let's yeah. let's talk about them toxin bombs. Steve, what about them toxin bombs? Oh yeah, toxin bombs. This is it's so messed up. So <laughs> any character subtype models that be your you know your captains, but also your sergeants and such. That is a Death Guard model with the traitor allegiance only could take toxin bombs for 10 points a model. Well, 10 points for the guy. If an unit charges that unit, they roll D6 for each model. That's part of the charge. If they roll a 1, they take a wound with no armor save, cover save, or damage mitigation, only in vulnerables. Basically, it forces your opponent to go through dangerous terrain, but without anti dangerous terrain protections kicking yeah. in. So uh, you get to laugh at the white scars, like, ah, oh, dangerous, I could, nope. Oh, God, if that 20-man unit charges you and you're It's talk <laughs> really funny if your opponent has a big blob unit mm -hmm. charging you, 
and they lose like three or four guys just because they dare to charge you. Well, even Terminators, you roll two ones. Uh, you just got, yeah, you, you got the invul at least against that. Oh, you got the invul. That's yeah. right. But still, that's that's mm. it's great for anti horde yeah. duty. It's and it's just funny to watch. So I'm all for it. I would absolutely sprinkle this on a couple of units that you don't want getting bogged down by um, enemy yeah. hordes. Or maybe that you're throwing into enemy hordes because it's like, yeah, okay, you charge me, you get hurt. You don't charge me, well, I'm already set to kill you anyway, yeah. so here goes. And it's, and it's when they declare Hilarious. the charge, which means they declare you've hit them. Then they roll their charge, let's say they make it, and then you could still choose to overwatch them then. So there's two different ways to be removing yep. their numbers to make it hurt less. I like that. And for only 10 points, yeah. I might not put it on certain backline units, but if anyone's going to be moving up towards the front at all, I think that's a 10-point you throw on them as a useful deterrent. Like a tactical mm -hmm. blob or an assault Oh, an assault squad, I think, absolutely. Because, you know, you're again, in a bigger game, your opponent is also going to be trying to do things to you. Like, you never think of a game in a vacuum where it's, oh, I'm going to have this scenario, I'm going to do this, because your opponent's trying to do the same thing. So your assault squad is going to get assaulted sometimes. This is going to potentially hurt or kill some models before they get to them. That's huge. Uh, power size, Dan. You want to power size. You have the power. Yeah. No, and I, so there's a reason why, because someone actually brought up a really good use of them, because they look kind of... Oh, hold on, let's talk about So power size, um, character subtype, death guard, um, they can exchange a power weapon for a power size, no additional cost. Essentially, it is a power weapon um, with plus two strength, AP three, two handed, reaping blow one, and rending six up. So the reaping blow one means if you base uh, two models, then you get an extra attack. That's not bad. And usually you can do that all the time. Uh, and then the rending six up is, and it's AP three. So, okay. So when I first saw this, I don't want to rant, but it's, there's a, when I first saw this, I really thought this, thought this was a sucky weapon, specifically because this is on the um, Death Shroud Terminators, which we're about to go. Death Shroud Terminators. Um, yeah, these are on the Death Shroud Terminators. I'm like, wow, this fucking sucks. Because normally Terminators have anti Terminator weapons, um, unless you feel them with lightning claws, but usually they're anti Terminator. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, we've, wow, this is. We went through a lot of I, legions but, where the, term, the special Terminators did not have Terminator weapons, Terminator killers. Well, should, they have like power fists or they have uh, as upgrades um, or a lot of the units True. there's been a good number of but units we talked about that did not actually have terminator killing weapons yeah. oh okay well I, was, I looked at this and i was like eh, plus two strength ap3 free whatever it's cool it's a good eight you know whatever it's good it's a free upgrade okay and i know we talk mostly about marines and it's a good marine killer by the way because it's ap3 so it'll shred the marines um because you get the extra ripping blow yeah. one Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You get the extra, what, sergeants are two attacks, three on the charge, you get four because you'll base two models. That's not bad. You know, AP3, you'll kill two models, maybe. Um, what I noticed this was really good against, and I didn't click until someone brought this up to me, was Mechanicum. Because everything in Mechanicum is a three-up save. They're, the only two-up save in Mechanicum is your Magos, the, 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 the Praetor version, I should say, not even the, the small guys, the Praetor version, and your Thanatars. Everything else is a three up or worse save. So if you're playing against Mechanicum and you get into close combat, which is what you want to kind of do with them, even Myrmidons, even though the Myrmidons are scary, you will just cleave through Myrmidons with this um, in a healthy fashion. So just a really cool kind of side play on like what this can be used for, um, which doesn't make it worse or better, but I like this weapon because it's good against Marines. Right, not a power fist, but it's good against Marines, but it's excellent against Mechanicum. So I would take this weapon. Yeah, it's a better Absolutely. power sword. Much better. Why wouldn't you take it? Well, you oh, could you lose fist. the two weapon attack. You lose the second weapon attack bonus. Oh wait, I got reaping blow. Yeah, yeah you got Never mind. Blow. I'm Even right back you where can't I was. Get the extra attack because let's say you're in a challenge, so the reaping blow is just not going to happen because you're essentially base to base with the one. You're plus two strength on a power sword. I'm normal strength. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, maybe I get the extra attack, but I'm only going to probably wound on like a four. Now I'm wounding on twos against the normal smash stat line. This is wounding on a two or three against um, Thalax, four against Castellax. And now it's a five versus a dread, which is an improvement over where you usually yeah. would be. 
you're only AP three, but at least you could force a couple through on fives. Yeah, no, this is I like this a lot. It's a, it's a really good weapon. It it was already kind of on the fence for me. Like I was like, okay, I could toss it in there because it's, it's, it's free. It's free. Power and it's free. Oh, that's the other. That's idea. a good price. Free. That's a good price. Yeah, there's no reason to run swords. <laughs> what a better price than free. Yeah, they do look. Side note, they also yes. look cool. Like you, you have a fucking sight. Like, come on. I mean, hell, on Terminators, this is getting you an extra attack because you normally don't get the bonus um, weapon bonus. Two weapon bonus. So, yeah. yeah. Take I it. mean, it's like anything. You have to know, again, you don't always say as to what you go against, where you aim at all, but you obviously go in with intentions. You don't take a unit with a bunch of power size to go against another Terminator unit. You try and steer towards something else, obviously. If you have to fight them, you got to fight them. But yeah, these guys aren't your Terminator killers. Take some normal cataphracty or you, you're you an army full of heavy weapons. Fire last cannons at them. Every four they miss, they're just going to die. So Or five up if they're Tartarus. The Tartarus are all out of stock, so I don't think about those. They're Tartarus, yeah. No, we uh, well, yeah, when, when they come in we, we stock, I'll one. care more about them. Unfortunately, I can't buy them. So. <laughs> now that the Predator's coming in, uh, we were I was going to make bets on how long that's going to be out of stock for. I'm going with know. two months. I, I'm going to – I'll have the local <laughs> store happen. put in superior orders, and we'll see what happens. I still got a backlog of stuff, so it's all good. Yeah. All right. We are on to units. Um, since I have some of these guys sitting about 10 feet behind me, I'm going to go through the Death Row Terminators because maybe by the time I'm done, I'm I will desire to uh, start building them and then come out of the little plastic baggie. And then I have to paint them. And my scheme, though I like, they're takes thick. a lot of time. Have you, have, have you huh? seen them yet? Have you seen them? They're, they're, they're not really that big. You, like, Honestly, they're not as big yet? as you think. They're really not. Really? Remember, they're Gen 1. They're from... Um, drop site massacre wave of weird because they look thick on the so page. they're proportioned properly for when they were came yeah. when they came out. Interesting. They okay. look like weeds next to yeah. Mark the, the big thing to keep in mind is they have more to them because they have you know the, the the front armor hanging down, but they're not actually bigger. So they they just look they huh. look larger because there's more that you see on them than you would see on a normal Terminator, and their weapons are huge. They fill yes. the space. Yeah, yeah, they fill up their profile. Okay, okay. It, they look thick no. on the page. That's why. No, I was no, no. Like, when I looked at them, no, they're they're not nearly as thick. Maybe I'll I might oh. try to work on them this week. We'll see. I actually have to go back to work this week, so I may not get in there as cool. much time as I think. They look cool. All right, but let's talk about these Terminator boys. Um, so. I, I could be wrong on this. I don't think I am. Not counting like HQ weird things. Talking about units. Like, uh, sorry, squad units, I should say. Excuse me. These guys are the most expensive. Because they're 140 points for two. They're 70 points a guy. And you can add more to the squad, which I'll talk about in a second for 70 points each. Nothing else touches that price. Not that I'm aware of. Maybe some weird Mechanicum or, or um, Custodes thing, but they're, that doesn't even matter. No, okay. no, I, I, I can answer that but right now. Consider, no, not sir, okay. consider. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not arguing that's not good, but that's the first thing I want to get out of the way is how expensive these guys are. There's a reason the squad starts at two instead of five man like everyone else. All right. Um. Yeah, there's three. Oh, yeah. And I, I have five of them. So because that's the way they sell them. So we'll see. Um, so they're move seven. Exactly. They are Tartarus armor. We get to that. Weapon skill five and Blissa skill five. So. They have special Terminator stat line on that. Strength four, toughness four. They're three wounds a guy, which is very useful when you are 70 points each. Holy crap. Um, initiative four, they have three base attacks. So they have captain um, in a Terminator squad level of attacks, leadership nine. So they have the better leadership on that as well in the two-up save. They have the power size. So they have the weapons we just talked about. So you want to steer away from big, heavy, chunky Terminator squads to some extent at least. Um, they have Alchem Pistols, which doesn't matter if it's Strength 3 when you're a Template and you're Fleshbane. And they're 2-up saves, so if your roll some gets hot, you should still be fine. They're Relentless, of course. They're Death Shroud Retinue. Um, Death Shroud Retinue is just going to let them be a Retinue. Um, if it's for someone who's Master of the Legion, they and get that. Um, they get all the bonuses, and they can take the standard. Um... I, I, on these huge. guys, yeah, because not I've realized not all retinues get the standard, and Dark Angels a bunch of them don't. 
but some of them do in this unit. Yeah, these guys are great for sitting on an objective if you have them. Uh, they're bulky too. Makes sense. They're battle hardened one. So that means for instant death purposes, they count as toughness five. So they can tank last cannons or anything that's not a strength 10 weapon. Uh, stubborn. They get yep. strength of dreadnought um, yeah. power fists. Not the chain fist. But and you're yes, more worried fist. about the, the power fist and the chain fist because the chain fist isn't the brutal three. Like, yeah, I got to make a save, but True. at least I don't have to make tons of them. Um, and they're chosen warriors. So they, they have a big boy stat line. They are very expensive. You are paying for their stat line in every way. But they get a lot of attacks, more, more base than other things. They have a power scythe. So if you get a charge in and you can base multiple models, you're sitting on five attacks a guy then. Um, I said they're battle hardened one, so they're not going to get sniped out nearly as easy as some other types of terminators could, especially as you know the other heavy weapon sprues are coming out. So it's September fifth when we're recording this. If this is post later in September, you're going to start seeing if you haven't seen it yet, big last cannon squads and and uh, units like that. These guys are not as worried about that, assuming you have several of them. When you're only six wounds for two guys, they still might be a bit worried. Um, dedicated transport options. If there's no more than five, they can take a Proteus. Um, and it's a dedicated. They can actually go up to a squad of 10. There is no option for a Spartan as dedicated. You could take one, obviously. Um, so Dan likes to take giant squads. You could take a 700-point squad of these guys. Yep. Any I model... see no problem with this. <laughs> you could yes. have five. If you really wanted to, honestly, take uh, 50 Death Shroud Mortarian Call to Deck. <laughs> oh, sorry, 49 Death Shroud and Mortarian Call to Deck. Um, any model can take multiple bombs for five, or you can grab a grenade harness. Um, I really like these guys a lot. I am less. The melt of bombs is yes. really clutch. I, they need it to I some extent when you're going against the heavy stuff that you can't deal with because your weapon, I mean, it makes your strength six, which is nice. But you're still only strength six, and you're still a three, you know, a, a three for an AP. So heavy stuff is going to be what ties you down and what really hurts you. Um, I mean, talking about grave wardens are cheaper, you know, when you think about how many of them you get. But I, I bought these guys instead of them because one, I really like the look. Two, I do think the weapons look cool, and I think this unit can do a lot of work. I mean, they talk about in the fluff how this is an army that loves Terminators and loves heavy options. So I love these guys, you know, filling an elite slot with, I don't know if I'd have run all five, maybe I'd have to figure that out. You know, when Proteus comes out, they're going to be the ones to get the Proteus, not the Dark Angels, so that way these guys can go in that, get them to their goal, and then just start tearing up whatever they want. The Ballista Skill 5, I mean, is there's literally no way to use that? Why, is, I was going to say, why the Ballistic Skill 5? I don't think there's anything that tests against Ballistic Skill. I, I, I was thinking about that. Like, there's stuff that tests against Leadership, yeah. Initiative. And I mean, they have I to give them it. a stat. I think they could still take over defense line weapons. I think that's still a rule. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. I haven't looked at any of that. That's, that's probably true. They're, I mean, they have to give them a stat. They're not going to put a blank even if you don't have a weapon. It's just funny that they gave them the extra ballista skill when they're probably literally never going to use it. But you know, these guys are just base good. And there's there's not much more yeah. to say about them. Yeah, All right. Uh, so who wants to take Grave Wardens? Because we have two regular units left. I'll take I'll take well, I, I mean regular yeah, I think a, I think Dan should take these guys. Yeah, I'll take Grave Wardens, but regular well, I, is such okay. a weird way to put So that. your options are so, either uh, HQ or units is is sort of the way I put it. So when I talk about regular, yeah. I talk about these guys essentially not being a leader of an army. Exactly. One thing yes. worth noting, real fast. Oh, the Death Shroud can be troops in Pride of the Legion yes. because they are elites. So you could have three wound terminator elite um troops in that Ooh. particular yeah. They won't be baseline because they That's won't be nuts. able. Um, the compulsory ones. I thought it was. I thought the wording was a little different. I thought you had to be. Yes. Oh no! Yeah, that's because they're right. That's right. They're that's not right. a Tartaros squad. I got too they're excited. They're a squad. A a squad that has Tartaros armor. So yeah, they can go, but they can still be made to be true. Correct. Which is, I mean, 
Yeah. Honestly, in a in the sort of army, I kind of like these guys just, filling just it in, a herald. and then anyone who looks like a normal marine is carrying the biggest weapon I could throw on them. I mean, that's what legion exactly. heralds are for, right? Stick them in, and yes. now it's scoring. All right, Dan, uh, grave wardens. All right, no gra gra grave wardens. Two fifty points. We're looking at a six inch move, weapon skill four, ballistic skill four. Strength four, toughness, toughness four, two wounds, initiative four, two, three attacks for the leader. Uh, leadership eight, leadership nine. It's a little bit higher. Uh, and the two-up save. Uh, it's two, yeah, cataphract the stat line. Except for yeah. the, they have Leadership's higher leadership. So yeah. Um, this 250 counts for five of them, not two this time. Um, they are armed with assault grenade launchers, a power fist, a death cloud projector, and they are armed with cataphracti terminator armor. They are relentless, bulky too, the whole normal. They are shrouded in death. They are armed with firing protocols too. We'll get to it. Is the death cloud? The death cloud projector yeah, is a weapon. Yet. Um, yes, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. Okay, so there we go. Good. They are shrouded six up. Oh, that's, that's freebie. Neat. Okay. And they're stubborn. Freebie, yeah, exactly. It's a one in six chance. Um... You could take additional Grave Wardens for 45 pop. That's actually not bad. 45 is not bad. Uh, you can exchange your Power Fist for a Chain Fist at 5, which I th think is a um, discount. No. No, no. Normal, normally, a Power Fist, a Chain Fist is 5. Yeah. That's that's a normal price. Okay, yeah. Um, every 5 models, you can change your Assault Grenade Launcher for a Heavy Alchem fl uh, Flamer. So for those who need a refresher, the Heavy Alchem Flamer is, is, is the Strength 5, AP 4. doesn't matter. It's Fleshbane. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. Still Fleshbane. Um, the Chem Master makes changes. Assault Grenade Launcher for the normal things. Kami Bolter, Magni, Miner. Uh, he could also exchange his Power Fist for a Power Scythe, and he can take a Grenade Harness. So let's take a look at their special rules, because they actually have a lot. The Assault Grenade Launcher is its own weapon. It's a new weapon. Dun, 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 dun. So the Assault Grenade Launcher uh, has two firing profiles. It can shoot at crack. And it, both are 18 inches, by the way. It can shoot crack at strength 6, AP 4, assault 2. So, you know, two shots at strength 6, AP 4, not bad. Uh, or it could shoot toxin rounds, which is strength 1, AP 5, but assault 4. <laughs> shit. Uh, poison 3 up and ignores cover. Not bad. Okay. Um, Death Cloud is a template weapon, which is Strength 1, AB4, Salt 1, Poison 3 up, and Shrouded in Death. Anytime you charge them, they automatically are counted as disordered, uh, the people charging this unit. That's great That's when you huge. have awesome weapons that so can wound great, yeah. most things on a 3 up, including templates. Yep. So, I mean, let's backtrack. Salt Grenade Launcher excellent weapon i like the fact that it shoots two strength six shots um um this is good um the toxin rounds are great though um poison three up four shots each ignores come means you're shooting 20 rounds um they're gonna hit on threes wound on threes and you get no cover saves against it which i don't know why oh, i guess like when solar auxilla comes out and their armor is five up maybe that's why I was like, I can't it's think a, of anything. It's a just in case. Just in case. Well, that's the only I can't think of anything that's a five up in the game. Something right ignores now. cover? Yeah, so oh, it's correct. not you can't. Shroud. Oh, no that's shroud right. against Ooh. ignores cover. Also, does work against, um, oh, crap. I forgot the Mechanicum unit. The one that I, uh, the, literally the one I don't uh, that, own because it's so expensive. That's all right. Um, the, the menial guys. The, uh, yeah, they're, 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 the literal, they're literal zombies. Um,. So yeah, that would work against them. That would shred through that unit, Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, the, you have the grenade launcher, excellent weapon. You have a template weapon. Again, just, just more shots. I wouldn't no. want to charge the squad at all. They, they don't need to spend their action. <laughs> like, They'll already disorder you, which means they can just shoot yeah. you with, with, with both weapons because they are firing protocols too. Um, firing protocols is any time they shoot, I assume, yes? Okay. Yes, and so that's okay. a mechanical player. So, yes, it is any time they shoot, and okay. it does clown in Overwatch. Yeah, it, it, this is another spot where you're going to really hurt people. And also, we talked about those toxin bombs before, which any character can have. The chem master in this group is a character, so I absolutely could be hurting you on ones, and then hitting you with wall of death or you know assault four weapons, 
and you're automatically disordered. No, not war. Oh, yeah. And. yeah, yeah, it's and. Yeah, it's not a war. It's actually, yeah. You know, and they yeah, have that's, paraffins that's, when you get in there, so they can still deal squad. with whatever ends up coming in. Yeah. They will strike at I one, but so like just charging the squad, mm-hmm. just charging the squad, you're getting five D three plus another twenty yeah. shots on top of that. That's so, and I I, I would absolutely take the toxic bombs oh, as well. Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't count. I would say I didn't even count the toxic bombs. I'm just saying normal two fifty points. I'm still not charging this goddamn squad. I'm gonna have to try to find a way to shoot them or like. Maybe use a sacrificial guy to charge him in. Like, this is, oh, man, they are. Whew. Talk about a wall of, like, just not charging. <laughs> yeah, they're, I like they're, it, though. they're good. I don't think I looked them quite as much. I mean, I got the Death Shrouds because I like them more. At some point, I'll get some of these guys. No worry, they're out of stock. I'm, I'm expecting oh, all this to be out of stock. I was going to say, they're out of stock. Yeah, I'm not saying anytime soon, necessarily. I will, say, I will say their assault grenade launchers look actually really cool. Um... I I've never seen a model with these yet. Yeah, I'm, but I don't I'm know if you've right seen now. them, Dave. No it's like a that. double barreled. Yeah, it's a double barreled like grenade launcher. It's so cool looking. It's like underslung. It's an underslung it, it, double barreled grenade launcher. It's not double. So barrel. Actually, it looks so damn cool. Oh, not double double. Yeah, um, it's, yeah it's a double drum. double drum magazine. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah it's single barrel. The double barrel they have is a combi. Yeah. One of the characters has a combi. That oh, just looks awesome. These guys are the ones who become. In 40k, the oh, the, the death shroud yeah. become the death shroud. The death shroud, oh god! And the grave wardens yeah. become the grave wardens. Oh, there are actual grave wardens. But they all them. trade their armor type out for the other Terminator armor type. Stop that! Yep. Oh, Last god. edition, both units could freely choose between Cataphracty and Tartarus. This edition, they're locked into the Forge World sculpts, and of course, 40k has the opposite sculpt. Mm. Plus a lot of oh, mutation of nonsense going on. So if you thought you're going to convert them from plastics, ah, uh, you you still could we'll say that. It's not too bad. I say go for yeah. it because it's dope. I don't think too many people would care too much as long as you're doing something. As long as you're making it for cool, no. not like as a cheap get around. As... A cheap get around is fine as well. But as long as you're not like, oh yeah, these guys are whatever. As long as you put in the effort. As yeah, long put in as some you effort, put in it'll the be effort. fine. I don't want you to care. Have fun. While playing toy soldiers. All right, Steve, that leaves you with the Mortis Poisoner Squad. More cheery guys. Yes. So these guys are from the Exemplary Units Update PDF on page eight. They are a special elite squad. Um, so that gives us two elites, one heavy support total for the Legion. Um, for 115 points, you get five guys that have bolters and rad grenades and a fairly standard marine stat line and squad and marine sergeant stat line. Yeah. They gain the heavy special rule, which is kind of nice. Um, they're stubborn. They get counterattack and bitter duty, so they are very much a destroyer unit. They have all the stuff kind of associated with them. They could take a rhino. They could take a termite. They could take a proteus. You could take up to 10 extra guys for Dan's f- oh-so-favorite count of 15-man max-sized squads. Um, anyone could take a chainsword. If you have a bolter, you can take a bayonet or a chain bayonet. Or any model of the bolter could swap it out for an alchem flamer for free. Um, you have a Vexilla, Nuncio Vox, Augury Scanner. You could have a heavy alchem flamer for one in five, which is kind of cool. Um, your squad sergeant could have a power up in or a power scythe for an extra five points for absolutely no reason. Oh, yeah. Well, why would that be? Uh, Isn't it normally you can just swap out? Now I'm going back yes. and checking just that's to be sure. Any model that's a character and Death Guard may, that's weird. may swap it for no additional cost. And this gives you an additional cost. And he's a okay. character. So th- that's, uh, that's absolutely nutty. That's yes. I, now I wonder sure. which way is intended because by rule I could take a power weapon and then just swap to the scythe for no extra bonus or start right at the scythe like that. I <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked if it was a five point upgrade and they just left yes. the one in there. Uh, that's probably what it is. Yeah, you wouldn't have the power weapon. 
But even then, why would you? Why would it be an upgrade at a point upgrade at all? It's li- not a point upgrade for any other unit in this army. They're the only ones. Yep, that's dumb. Um, I say just yeah. pay the ten points because GW they they did yeah. this to themselves. You can take artificer <laughs> armor. You take a phosphex bomb, and the sergeant only could have melted bombs. So a little different from the base destroyer. Unit. And they don't get any cool special rules like the Ultramarines unit did. It's just, they have bolters. They could have flamers instead. They get rag grenades. Honestly, the bolter rag grenade build seems like it yes. might be kind of fun. Just because you have the chain bayonet attached for strength 5 paired with the toughness debuff. Yeah. That actually sounds kind of fun as an assaulting yeah. unit. And you can be, so a, legion, a, a tactical support squad of 5 guys is 85 points. So these guys are 30 more points. You could swap them to the Flamers because technically the support squad starts with Flamers, so they could do Flamers as well. So for a little bit more, you yep. could have Bitter Duty, which can be useful depending on what you want to run. Counter attack in case someone charges you, which is nice. And you have Rad Grenades. So it, it gives you some different options. I kind of like that. Like if you want to be able to put, you know, your uh, more attack, you know, in a unit with a bunch of chemical weapons, here's a great way to be able to do that. Definitely. Yeah. I like the unit. I'm not oh, going to no. say they're effective, but so, I love yes. the idea of the unit. And I would try it at least once. Would I ever take Whoa, okay. what, your audio is real bad. You're super far oh, away. Sorry. You'll sound like you're 100 feet away. There you go. Oh, there we go. Try that now. Oh, yes, you're why, back. Hello. Yeah. Why? Would I ever take the heavy outcome flamer for 20 points when the outcome flamer does the same fucking thing? Um, because one, it's dope. Two, it's AP4. Yeah. With yes, a question is. mark. Is it? No, is it's it? A, I think yeah. 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 Four. Heavy heavy. AP4. Yeah. That's a lot of points for heavy four uh, for AP4. Yeah, um, I was gonna say it should it that should be like a 10 point up. Yeah, 20 points for AP4. Uh. The, the, you know, you <laughs> the only this is that's the sort of thing where you'd make an argument if and again, you know, oh, in my in in the group I play in, a lot of people have toughness, you know, three models. I don't know, solar auxilia or whatever. I'm assuming they're toughness three. I've never seen the guys, but they're normal people. Oh, so now if they want to charge me, I'll be instant deathing their characters because I have rad grain or something. Like, there's arguments, but no, save the twenty points. If you want to do a bunch of flamers, just take normal flamers for an extra, you know, fifteen points. You could put them in the vehicle. You know, don't buy the flamer. Save fifteen more points. Go throw these guys in a vehicle. Go run up the field. Hit someone with diseases in their face. No, I, I was looking at that. I'm like, I'm looking at them like they, they want to give them the option. <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but I mean, if you deal with a lot of Thalax, I guess, or uh, user racks are also uh, four up save, right? Yes, the old, so if so... you have a guy so Dan. that plays Mechanicum and is a pain in the ass with his four up save units. Maybe there's a, you know, that's why Dan hates this option. Not because it's bad, but because he plays Mechanicum. Well, it's just, uh, also, you tore my Earth Rocks and you won before I, they even got to do what they did, which is hilarious. It's because I know what they so do. If you have Dan yeah. in your local meta, but um, that. there's the meta play. No, there are more Mechanicum players. I don't think there's nearly there's as many as you us. think. I think because you're in groups that talk about it, you're hitting echoing chambers. I think that's absolutely uh. true. You, I, Wait till that, that's a different story, but they're not right now. <laughs> it's the same reason why, you know, we don't want to say, well, hey, if you face a lot of a, a solo auxilia players, here's what you should do. You're not going to. Most people are not going to. Yes, there's going to be some groups that buck that trend. But the average group, so I know, I don't know, like 20 people playing this game. You're the only person I know who has armies that aren't normal Marines. You know, it, it's not saying there isn't other people out there, but I, you know, you have to be careful when you sit in an echoing chamber to know the amounts that you're actually looking at. I think they're a lot lower than you think. Mm. So when they turn to plastic, that'll be another story. But yeah, no, these guys are cool. Nothing too great, like you said, but take them. They fit, they fit the it's theme perfect. Unit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they get rag grenades. That's oh, yeah. pretty damn death guard to me. And uh, chain bayonets paired nicely with it, or just wall of death flamers. Yeah, day in, that, that's, day that's what I like the idea of. Just fun stuff. All right. So. We have some special fun characters stuff. to go through. We are going to 
Yeah, um, one, two, three, four. four, four total. Um, we'll start with the one in the main book. Four, and then we oh, will man. swap from there. We'll go back to, um, the legacies because the legacies is where they have essentially the, all they have in the legacies is characters. Um, I already know Dan wants to talk about Garrow. Yeah. Um, Steve, do you have a preference of any Absolutely. of these other? All right. Not maybe I'll, maybe I'll take Typhon then, and then we'll uh, see who wants to fight amongst for the other one. Um, so this is Typhon. He's 200 points. He is someone still around in 40K. Um, he is move six, weapon skill six, plus skill five. He's four for strength, toughness, and wounds, as well as his attacks. He's initiative five, swing a little bit faster. Leadership 10, two up saves. So um, essentially what? Praetor in Cataphracty uh, stat line. Uh, actually, yeah. That's a stat line, which makes sense. Yes. Is he tax four? Yeah, yeah. yeah when, well, at least when, okay. when yeah, he's so in the yeah. armor, he is, yeah. Uh, he might be in both forms. I think it is. I think it's four in any form. Yeah, it's four in that. And I think if he's not in the fancy armor, it's still four. Yeah, he doesn't lose the tax there. He gains the wound, but that puts him at the same stat line, which base Cataphracty Praetor is 135. So he's starting 65 more. Let's see what he gets. He gets an outcome pistol, which is nice. Uh, Lacrime, which we'll see what that is in a moment. He already comes with his grenade harness. He has that death cloud projector, which you talked about before, which was a poisoned three up template. He comes base with rag grenades and he has his Cataphracty armor. Uh, he is a master of legion, so he'll open up some rights of war for you. Independent character, of course. Both relentless, stubborn, which is good when you're leadership 10. He's bulky, too. He's got witch blood, which is a rule we'll talk about shortly. He's shrouded in death, which we read previously on the Grave Wardens. That was the you always count as disordered. Uh, firing protocols, too. Uh, he has his shrouded six up, and he's, of course, a traitor with a warlord trait. So he has a lot of the special things that the Grave Wardens have. Also a Psyker yes, under the unit type. he is a Psyker, although nice. it tells you what he's allowed when we get to it. Because um, he, like, he's a Psyker, but it's sort of you know, in a little bit of a different way. So um, he's the same way as, what is it, the Asoterrorist kind of thing? A little bit more like that, I believe. Um, if he's your Warlord, he gets mm -hmm. this particular world trait, comes the Reaper. When making attacks as part of a shooting attack or during an assault phase with any weapon that has the poison special rule, Typhon and any unit um, with at least model one model within six inches, so essentially him and any unit that's got someone within six inches of him, increase the value of the poison by one. So his poison three-up weapon is a poison two-up weapon. And me may re-roll fail to wound rolls for weapons with the Fleshbane special rule. In addition, because yeah. remember, um, the outcome were Fleshbane, so you get re-rolls on those, or your poisoned three-ups, because that's mostly what they had, become poisoned two-ups in a lot of ways. In addition, you get an extra reaction in the movement phase, which this is the first way to do that, which is interesting because you know, for a, a by-the-numbers, slow and plotting army, being able I, to get movement yeah. or being able to get into the better ranges excuse me, is very useful. Kind of like the other one's a little better, but it's not Yeah, bad. that I... Now, six inches is kind of limiting to an extent. It's not going to be a But all you need is one model from that unit to just no. lay. It doesn't say holy within. So as long as you tag that aura, oh, my God. I could imagine him him in, like, 15 freaking uh, Grave Wardens around him. Grave? Oh, God. Well, I gra like so it. Grave That's... Wardens are max twice 10. What happened? Max squad size so ten on grave wardens. Oh, okay, you're saying five, five, five. Like, oh yeah, I, I, five, he's if you if you're taking yeah. him to be your warlord, you're building parts of your list to be guys standing near him. You know, a bunch of terminators all walking up the board together, which is very fitting for death guard. Um, Lacrime, so it's his weapon. It's power weapon for all intents and purposes. It's plus two strength, so essentially for him, strength six, AP two. It's melee, two handed. Reaping blow one, so he doesn't get the bonus for close combat weapons, but he can get his reaping blow, and it is Fleshbane. Um, which actually for that, so normally if you're going against a, uh, say like a Contemptor, Fleshbanes have to be, successes have to be re-rolled. They re-roll failures, so it's just a roll on AP2, so 
Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah I was going to so, say that. So he gets his swings yeah, yeah. and he's getting through their armor so on you... two ups. He might not get his reaping blow, but hey, four attacks or five on the charge. Yeah, he's he's even good against the very heavy stuff. And it's initiative. Does he, does have... he, have he, does. And he does have rad grenades. So fun fact, he's also instant deathing pretty much any yes. Marine stat line. Yeah, so he's, he's wounding you. You might Ew. get you <laughs> get an involved if you have it, and then he's instant <laughs> deathing your standard Marine stat line. Um, he's got Death God Projector, which you talk about, his Shroud and Death, which we talked about. Witch Blood. So he has the Witch Sense Psychic Power and Toxic Cloud Psychic Weapons and does not gain access to any other disciplines. Um, is that it, he's a Psyker, but since they, you know, eschewed Psyker so much, he essentially only has his very particular things. It's more of, you know, he, he, he hates psychers so much this is the way it comes out sort of hates himself for what he is um his witch sense power mm -hmm. so it's in the assault phase this is the start um uh typhon's controlling player may make a psychic check for him if it's passed his weapon skill characteristics is increased by one and his attacks is increased by d3 if he fails then it's perils of the warp so he has five uh sorry his weapon skill six on four attacks he could be Weapon skill seven with four plus D three attacks. So maybe even five plus D three because of yes. uh, reaping. Yeah, blow. yeah, it's not even counting reaping blow if he has it. So he can do a lot of damage. And leadership ten, Jesus so it should Christ. be you know fairly <laughs> useful of getting it. Um, he is psychic weapon because all psychic powers of the base stuff have weapons as well. Um, this is why he has what is it? Firing protocols is the word. Firing protocols two. Because this is a shooting weapon. It's 24 inch range, strength one, AP4 is fine. It's a large blast that's flesh bane pinning and has a psychic focus. Um Yep, he needs to make a psychic test in order to use the weapon. But he's got a large blast that is flesh bane and can pin. Um yeah, awesome. that's that's nice. I have him over here, I'm sure. He honestly I really like him. Um it's the kind of thing of Special characters are very up in the air thing for me because you do pay a lot more. Yes, you get stuff for them, and that's great. But I'm not sure they're always will. It, there's a distinction of will they get their points back or will they do enough cool things for you that you enjoyed it and are glad they were there. I think one he can get his points back having both rad grenades and a strength six weapon with you can potentially get a lot more attacks or get several more attacks with extra weapon skill, all of that. And I think he's just cool in general. So to me, he ticks all the boxes. I, I agree. No, I, I agree. 200 points is a nice middle ground for a special character. You know, some, some we've seen are 250, some are 200, some are the cheap side. 200 is a nice middle ground. He can absolutely ace uh, someone who he's in a challenge with. Um, because yeah, he strikes an initiative, too. I don't think it's unwieldy, yeah, is it's it? it's initiative. The, his power side. Yeah, so he can absolutely... To get a psychic power off, now he's weapon skill seven, right? Just in case you're hitting something that's weapon skill six. Now you're still hitting on threes with four. Let's say he charged five and he's in reaping blow six plus D3 attacks. That's at strength six and your toughness three. That's yeah. insane. That is that he carves through shit. In fact, I know I kind of laughed and I said I'd put him in with the grave wardens, but holy shit, I almost want to put him with the goddamn. um death shroud because he kind of handles the not yeah. ap2 the, the that they don't have theoretical downside of that is death shroud or tartaros he's cataphracty so he's going to stop sweep his sweeps but yeah but oh, you hopefully right, yeah. will kill out most of what you want if not entirely to a point where one or two guys get away you're not really worried about that um absolutely think oh, yeah. he makes his points back though dave like i he's built to just yes, clean really and whatever stupid good yeah, he's good. He's good, this and stupid, he fits the theme perfect. So he'll do a lot for you. You won't feel bad taking him. The only thing you want to be careful with, and maybe why he's good with the Death Shroud, maybe a little bit more, is because he does not have. Um, oh, I forget the name of the rule. Was it Hardened? Hardy? What is it? Battle Hardened. He's not Battle Hardened, so he can get doubled out. So he he fits very well in there, but because they could be a retinue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they think and then that's 
No, that's good. He's 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 great. I like the two hundred. I I've, I've been liking so far the two hundred point characters. Like even your Dark Angel ones are around two hundred, two twenty five. When they're like around there, they're pretty like they're good. I don't feel they're too expensive. I also don't feel they're like too cheap. They're like a good yeah. amount of honestly. They holy can't shit. Oh, and um, I like it. So the Parasite is plus two strength. So on your Death Shrouds, that puts them to strength six. And no, oh, they're, they're not armed grenades? with rag grenades. But he and is. Oh, so when oh, he's okay. with them, maybe you're ter- maybe if I go against Terminators, yeah, you get a oh, save. Yeah. But if you fail it, you're dead. I don't mind. And that's also, that means that each one yes, costs I, I don't five mind attacks. swinging an AP3 so... weapon at a Terminator where every fail kills a Terminator. The pain is when it takes two to take you down. That now I could actually cut through your numbers. Exactly. And the weapons go five. So if you're hitting normal Terminators, yeah. you're still hitting on threes with five Even attacks. Even better Terminators. I don't mind hitting better Terminators when I can kill you at initiative before your weapons that I'm potentially worried about, not as much because I battle hardened, come back at me. And now I'm going to have to get this guy. Yeah, no, he's 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 a yeah. great power uh, multiplier, uh, uh, I think is the word. Once once I build up a little a more, great power I'll get this guy because he is actually very cool. And now as I read more, I'm like, oh. No, he's he's great. Him. Yeah, now you got to build him. Look at that. You it never sucks. need a named character. No. Never. Nah, I don't, that's me being uh, old school. Yes. This guy's so This, this guy is so Absolutely dope. not. You don't, oh, you don't need him in terms of without him, your army is going to falter and it's going to go bad. But I think you want him because he's cool and he will exactly, do a lot yeah. for you. And he is very good. Like, Agreed. I totally want this guy. All right. Uh... S- Okay. You want to take Cyrus? Take okay, Cyrus. so you can do Cyrus. Mort- Steve Mort- will do uh, the Marshal after that, and then you can talk about Garrow. I got Garrow. Yeah. So Cyrus Mortar. He's got a dumb name. Um. Let's see here. Move it. I, I'm trying to figure out how to say the yeah, last one. Let's Mortar. go with Mortar. It it's as dumb as it um, Mortar. Yeah. 175. So he is on the cheaper side, ish. Um. Movement seven. Weapon skill five, plus skill five, strength okay. four, toughness five. Hello. Okay. He 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 thick. Uh three wounds, initiative five. Uh attacks three in leadership. Oh shit. Stupid question. Was was your dude initiative five? He would have been initiative five because he's a he's a oh, Praetor he stat line. Okay. Yeah, Praetor yeah, stat lines are initiative five. five. Yeah. So three attacks, yeah. Three attacks, leadership nine, two up save. So he's got Oh, finally, someone who's armed with these. Two disintegrator pistols. He has death tally. Um, these are all pretty much special rules, Jesus. He's got an alchem combi flamer, the revenant's aegis, frag crack, mm-hmm. and also still rad grenades. Yeah. He's also a psyker. They had psychers. They just okay. didn't like you them. Know, for... <laughs> and, and once the heresy occurred, <laughs> I was say, for a legion that really to kill them all. Oddly enough, except for Typhon. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, he's got relentless. He's got stubborn, bitter duty, counterattack. Yes. He's a loyalist, though. Hello, shielded by hate and the shadow of death. All right, he's got a ton of special rules. Jesus. So first of all, he's if he's the warlord, he has shadow of death during deployment. If any enemy unit is deployed within eighteen inches of Chrysos or any model in the unit he joined, then he, then once all infantry and scouts have been deployed, both friendly and enemy, Chrysos and the, any all models he joined may move to seven inches in any direction, but must end the move in unit coherency. In addition, uh, him and any unit may make a reaction of any kind normally allowed to them at no cost. The controlling player's reaction allotment. Oh, that's a kind of neat one. Um, when reacting to enemy units entering play from reserve. So it's very specific. Okay, we'll get back to that. I, I need time to, to, to digest that one. Um, shielded by Hate. Chrysos gains access to the Shielded by Hate psychic power and etheric lightning, lightning weapon power uh, and gains no other discipline. So these are basically he has this. So Shielded by Hate, once per battle. Oh, it's only once per battle. When Chrysos Mortug is reduced to zero wounds or otherwise removed from play as a casualty, the controlling player may immediately make a psychic check for Chrysos. If the second test is pack, and give me a sec, is he leadership 10? Yep. He's leadership 9. Okay. If, it, if the second test is passed, uh, he is not ruined as a casualty, but instead placed a reserve with one rune remaining and may re enter play as normal. If the psychic 
check is failed and Chrysos is removed as a casualty as per normal yep. and then the unit suffers the perils of the warp. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> um, so the Revenant's Aegis is his... Uh, actually, tally. you know, I'm going to skip to Death... Yeah, let's skip to Death Tally because no. that's its... Wait, no. Where's Etheric Lightning? Oh, oh is Etheric it's Lightning a... It's a generic one. Oh, it's a generic one. That's why I was... Okay, so yeah. let me go to Re- Revenant's Aegis. Apologies. Two up armor save, four up and vulnerable, six up shrouded. Done. Very easy. Death's Tally is his weapon. It is um, a melee weapon, uh, plus one strength, AP two. Um, so can instant death. Overcharged and Reaping Blow two. Okay. So overcharged. After combat in which a model whose weapon has the special rule has made... At least one attack has been re- uh, resolved. Roll the dice. On a roll of one, you suffer a wound which yep. only an invulnerable save may be taken. His weapon gets too hot. Why? It's a power blade. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah essentially, it get, it gets too hot. Um, etheric lightning. So it's 18 inch range, strength three, AP four, assault four, and it's yeah, force. Right. Force just means if you take a psychic test, you can double the strength. Okay. Uh, I actually <laughs> like the weapon. What? Hit, hit, that's tally? I like it. Yeah, I, I, okay, great. So I'm going to come back to the weapon. The the warlord trait is it's at initiative AP two with bonus strength. Yes, I will occasionally suffer with a reaping blow wound for that. Two. Yeah, with reaping blow two, um, so you can easily get five attacks. Yeah, he's that's great. The warlord trait is he also has two disintegrator pistols, which is nothing to sneeze at. That's either. great. No, that I was going to get to in a second. It's this, dangerous though. Yeah, disintegrator pistols are oh god, more attached with disintegrators. Is he more attached? I'm trying. Um, I was trying to figure that out before. Is he's he basically a more hybrid of a more attack and a librarian? Yeah. We, okay. But he has a stronger um stat with uh, three wounds. Okay. Because he so gets at better the... duty and counterattack like a more attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he, he's yes. part of the destroyers. Okay. A destroyer, uh, essentially, core. And then he got sent down to Istvan because he's a psyker. To be killed, but he survives. Oh, for those who don't know what a disintegrator pistol is, I, it's strength five, AP two, instant death, gets hot, pistol one. It's an amazing gun. Amazing gun. Um, no. Now I get the chain fire, though. No, he doesn't get chain fire, but he also fire, he but, doesn't have. Yeah. Can you fire two yes. pistols if you don't pistols have fire protocols? Do. Yes, it's oh, called okay. gunslinger. Oh god. Okay. Um, it's that risky, warlord trait. I probably but... wouldn't take. I probably would take him and not take the warlord trait, only because it requires your at your 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 um. Your enemy has to have infiltrators. Which we'll call like it. It requires your. Uh, yeah, and it also requires your opponent to fuck up, which. You know, you're not going to be like, ha-ha, now you've, you're going to tell them, listen, none to blow within 18, or, you know, I do this. Um, and the reaction only allowed against reserves, or Weak. not counting yep. against... Because <laughs> the only thing you're normally allowed to do is make a, um interceptor attack. There's a free interceptor. <sighs> the most wordy way yep. possible, it's free yeah. interceptor. I would just take him and just probably not make him warlord. He's cool though. I will give him. I I like the fact that. But see, if he's warlord, you can easily just not give your opponent the warlord victory points. Yeah, once. It's the leadership nine power check. But it's and once. It, it, he gets. Good. Sorry, what happened? Yeah, I know, but it, he's not. Oh, hopefully, he doesn't die. But even if turn it's later and two, he comes back, okay. Turn three. Swing at him again later. Now he has one wound, yeah. and there's nobody with him. Why do you not have Death Guard in the back line? <laughs> no, but yeah, I understand. But it still could work. Like you could still like string him into like maybe a heavy support squad in the back. Um, because sometimes I've you know warlord tri- killing a warlord is sometimes no, one to three warlord. victory Typhons points. Typhons is your warlord. So this boy's running up. Oh yeah, what sorry, friends. Uh, well, oh, don't Typhon make him a warlord. Is... Yeah, that's why I was the yes. Also, yeah. he's bitter duty. He's not with your heavy squads. Also, his weapons are only 12 inch range. He's scoping up. Oh, true. He can't even check out the disintegrator pistols. He yeah. has to ride in a transport. You got to throw him in a transport of some kind because he has 12 inch range and he's walking without the option to because he's heavy. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, no, no. He, yeah, he's getting in a transport. He's going with Ooh. some other bitter, bitter duty squad and his goal is to try to eliminate something. This guy, yes. Mortis Poisoners, in a drill. Pop out nuke something with a ton of flamers 
and two instant death shots. Yeah, yeah. he's nice. Okay. N- nothing amazing to write home about. But if you're running loyalists and you want to have a good theme, that's a really good theme. He was one of the ones there on Istvan. He was one of the people oh, that they drilling. essentially just couldn't kill. So, all right, that puts oh. Steve. Who's this? Now I I really want this guy now. Damn. I know because you play Loyalist Death Guard. Oh, hey, the guy you're about. No, to... I don't. The, oh, the, you don't. The guy you're about. Well, to... This might make me. The guy you're about to talk about now. the traitor. So there you go. <laughs> All right. All right. So maybe this guy could bring me back to the traitor side. Marshal Durak Rask. He's a 165 points. His stat line looks like a fairly standard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's centurion with uh, yeah. extra attack. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, same amount of attacks. No, nope. yes. I think he's bog standard. Yeah, weapons go five, blood six go five, wounds two, initiative five. Yeah, that's pretty pretty standard. All right, what's he got? He's got a Volkite Serpenta, a special weapon called Defiant, Artificer Armor, a Nuncio Box, Refractor Field, Frag and Crack Grenades, and a single Phosphex Bomb. No rod. No. Oh. Nope. A loyalist. He oh, is no, a unique model character. He is also heavy. He's right. a loyalist, sorry, a traitor Death Guard character. He's got protocols of destruction and a special warlord trait called Merciless Doctrine. So that warlord trait, any feel no pain rolls taken against wounds inflicted by this guy or unit he's joined is reduced by minus one to minimum of six up. So if I feel no pain four up, it's now a five up. This guy is actually pretty good against mm-hmm. uh, tactical blobs spamming apothecaries. Something to know. In addition, if your warlord's this guy, get an extra reaction in the shooting phase, as long as he's not dead. That's actually a pretty solid warlord trait. I would run that. Yeah, I would one hundred percent run that. That'd be really nice in like a Volkite squad. Because yeah, Ooh. that makes what an apothecary yeah. go from five up to six up, and yep. if they're on, on an objective, yeah. from a four up to a five up. Five yeah. up, yeah, it's not bad. That's really good, especially considering the dice Volkite put out. Oh, beautiful. That's a really good trait. Mm-hmm. Jesus. That's a really good trait. And uh, that Pro Calls of Destruction rule he's got, what's that do? Um, you can activate this rule at the start of your own turn, or if the control player is not first turn, the start of the battle. Um, essentially, any penetrating hits you cause with this, gain a plus one on the vehicle damage chart until the beginning of your next turn. Uh, <laughs> you also can equip your rapier car- carriers with quad launchers. With Phosphex canister shots for 20 points a model. (laughs) There it is. Oh, I knew it was somewhere. Beautiful. (laughs) Uh, And Arcana squads can also take Phosphex shots for 20 points a model. Oh, yes. There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Did they get rid of the Phosphex canister shots that that they used to be able to take? Nope. There it is. Oh, God. Oh, I hated this so much. With my custodians and my mechanicum. Yep. You don't get to complain. You have a two up save. No, it was AP2, wasn't it? AP3. It's AP2 on the Medusa, which oh, is no okay. longer an option. It was no longer an option. I remember the Medusa, that's why. But still, yeah, but the base points? Medusa caused instant death, so that was better. Oh, man. 20 points for how many? How many is Phosphorx canister shot? Is two, canister oh, shot. On. I got to scroll down right. here. So. Yep. Phosphex is on page 135 of the right uh, Starry's yeah. books. Um, it's got a short range. Well, it's AP3, Poison 3 up, which is nice, but eh. yes. it's still 12 to 24. It's, it's it used to be 36. True. It's still Blast, still Poison. It gained the minimum range. Crawling Fire and Lingering Death, so you could kind of move Phosphex. it around. And it's AP3. Yeah. <laughs> It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I remember it being worse. I remember this being a hell of a lot worse. In the original run, it was four small blasts, which was really good. Now it's a single small blast. Now, hold, hold on. Let me see if there's a aquitor. single small blast. Oh, the Aquitor is... Even on the Aquitor. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, no, that's not... That's, that's, uh, yeah, it's not worth... No, nah, shame. Yes. Listen, oh, I, I say what a shame, but I also remember how some people could spam this shit, and it was... You mean everyone know, could spam this shit? Yeah. It was, it was kind of cancer. Um, uh, no, that's the, that's the radiation missiles. All right. <laughs> and the rag grenades. Yeah. 
Okay. This one's white box. Still got one more weapon. <laughs> is it really? Oh, oh yes. sorry, we really yes. forgot. And defiant. This is his custom weapon. It's strength eight, fixed. AP two, melee unwieldy. Brutal two, very nice. Specialist and Sunder. This is a fancy hammer. Sunder's nice. It gives you reroll to penetrate vehicle play. armor. Not nah, yup. And we get that pen. It's plus one on the chart. So now he's got a plus two on the chart. Because AP2 yeah. plus the other one. Well, no, no, the protocols don't really that, come into play here. It could, or but no, it's it also does. any unit he joins. So, because um, it doesn't have to be shooting attack. So, if you're shooting, you can give it to the other units because it won't help him in shooting. But if it's a close combat unit, it will help him there. Yeah. Okay, dumb, really Correct. dumb question because maybe I just can't read. Protocols oh. is not a once per game thing. And there's no downside to activating uh, the program. Uh, at the start of the Correct. Turns. Like, I'm not missing something? I don't see it being once a turn. I, I, so I was reading it because when you read it, I was thought yeah, it was, it's supposed it's to be once per turn. Play they once that. per turn. And it sounds Why, just because like, otherwise there's no reason you wouldn't just but, have it all the time because it talks about you having to activate them. So it definitely is yeah. once, once a game. No, maybe you don't want to blow up a t- <laughs> It's absolutely meant to be once per game. There is literally no reason why it wouldn't be. Because then you wouldn't tell me about all the rest of the stuff. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that's not the case. That is just, that's a missing line. That's all. Oh, GW. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Because there's similar rules for the Dreadnoughts. Where they activate the thing. Which says they, then they can't move. But they gain Interceptor and Skyfire, essentially. And then there is the one for the, um, the Legion Heavy yep. Weapon supporting guy. The Siege Breaker. Where he hands a unit Sunder. Yeah, there's there's no downside to this, but and they talk about turning it on, so it's definitely not intended. Is... Yeah, they, they missed the so weird the once per game part. That's all. How do we feel about this other guy? Knowing he's supposed to only be once per turn. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. Um, no, sorry, I'm putting my foot down on that one. No, he's not great. Yes, his warlord trait is really cool. I really like his warlord trait. It's not. Oh, he's kind of yeah. expensive. He's only got two wounds. If he was a Praetor stat line, I'd say, yeah, I'd field him. But because he's only a captain stat line, he's kind of expensive for what you're getting. Even if that Warlord it's, trade is absolutely it's baller. A, he's in a weird spot because Merciless Doctrine, which, okay, I lower your, your feel no pains, and his weapons say, I want to be close. But Protocols of Destruction, to me, feels much more like I want to be from far away. Because they talk about how you can do it on the first player round. Uh, uh, you, even if you're not going first, you can just do it at the start of the game. Which you're not going to be doing really with a close combat unit. You're going to be doing it with a shooting unit. So his rules to me feel like they're pulling in two different directions. And for 165 points, I want you to be well focused. For cheaper, you can have like a half and half. Neither does quite enough. Pro destruction is nice. But your warlord trait and your own war gear doesn't help. Those things are other things are nice, but he can't touch a vehicle in any way unless he's in close combat. You know, I, I don't know. He's split down the middle, and I don't like it. Maybe he might look yeah, cool. I, I'm sorry. He doesn't have a model, but maybe like a picture of him. Maybe he looks cool. I don't. Yeah, he doesn't have a oh, hold. Let me right. have to copy. And um, well, no, stupid you're name. not going to do that because you're going to talk about. Okay, Carol some people did some really cool conversions. Oh, the yes, myth. the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, God. No, well, I don't think he's real. Well, I've <laughs> never seen Garo, so. Nathaniel Garo, uh, the knight errand, used to be Death Guard, Hand of the Sigilite, whole bunch of titles, badass, overall, just an awesome dude. So, <sighs> 170 points, so kind of cheap. Um, also, as a side note, he could never be a non-compulsory HQ choice. Uh, or sorry, he could, he's, uh, he's a non-compulsory HQ choice can never be the Warlord. Kind of the same thing as uh, Rubio was. Greater stat line. Uh, he's got a yeah. Praetor stat line? Yes. Uh, yes, he's got a Praetor stat line. He's armed with a Paragon Bolter. He's armed with Libertas. Bolt Pistol, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, and the Aquila Imperator. He is battle hardened one, because kind of like every, <laughs> every death guard. Um, he's got the Emperor Protects, Loyalist, obviously, 
and independent character. Um, so let's scroll down and see what he's got. Libertas is his weapon. It is a plus one strength AP2, melee, two-handed, edge of truth. All edge of truth does is that when he's fighting a challenge, Garrow gains reach one and brutal yeah, so he two. he wants the challenge. Which is, <laughs> That's nice. Yes, he wants the challenge. Um, yeah. It's AP2 natively too, which is nice. He's got the Aqua Imperator. Which, yep. and as Dave said, he wants to be the challenge, right, Dave? Well, he's got a two-up armor, say, four-up and vulnerable, and then a three-up and vulnerable mm -hmm. when fighting the challenge. <laughs> so, still wants to be in a challenge. Um, what's really cool is he has the old rule that he used to have from 1.0, which is pretty cool. The Emperor protects. Uh, the first time in any battle that Nathaniel Garrow loses his last wound or is otherwise removed from play as a casualty, the controlling player must immediately roll a d6. Uh, on a 4+, plus, he remains in play on a single wound instead of being removed or destroyed. So 50-50 shot of not dying. Um, and then he's got a fancy bolter. He's got a 24-inch strength 5 AP4 assault 2, which is nice. Shredded, shred bolter. Um, I mean, so I like him. I like him for the fluff, as you could probably yep. guess from my very golden retrievery voice. Um, I love him in the fluff. He, I think, I know a lot of people hate him because they think he's too. What do they call him? A I forgot the stupid nickname. Yeah. Uh, Straight Arrow yes. Garrow was that was was that was the nickname they gave him. Uh, but I really do love him because I know. Um, right now, I'm. Let me see. No, this wouldn't be spoilery. This is like, this is before. For Siege of Terror. So no, this is not spoilery. Uh, before Siege of Terror actually happened, he was actually not let go by Malkador, but he was um he was kind of told to go find himself. <laughs> it's like the nicest way to put that. Um and he does he's like he's he's got a lot more um the word I'm looking for. Per he's got more personality than most characters in Heresy. Um and he's also a very troubled character because he comes from a legion that was traitor. Um and I mean rules wise. He's 170 points. 130. Which, how much uh, is the base crater? 130, if I remember correctly? Uh, let me check. I think when they're in, when they're in Cataphracty Armor, I think they're 135. No, I know, but I'm saying that's the cost He's I know off the top of my head. Yeah, okay. Base Praetor's 120 when they're in normal armor. 120. And you get he's got a fancy paragon blade, essentially. Although it's brutal too, so it's not really the same. But he's got a fancy paragon blade. So he's, he's, he's a little bit more expensive than most, but he has the ability to not die. He has a three up and vulnerable in challenges, which he always wants to be in. Um, I like him. I would, I, Do I've it. been wanting to buy him for quite some time. I think, well, no, here's the thing. In, in Where the type, hell is he on the forge? Garrow, I bet. That's what I'm typing. I found oh, him. I guess, I yeah. It. I did try to find him, him, but, um, I would love, I would love to run him with my custodies. I would love, oh man, though, I hate that. Hold on, can you change the base? You, you can do a different they have base, on top but of his a legs a word are going to be um, set. So you'd order. have to put something under him. Yeah. I know. Uh, his legs you know. actually. Uh, I hate when they do it. I don't mind. Off. They're not so far off from each other, actually. If you I don't look mind at some other things. So you could put him on something. You would just, no. he would need to be a little bit in dynamic pose, which is fine. But it, the height isn't that awful in difference. Yeah. It does look cool, though. Oh, can I can I point out though? Holy shit, the model looks actually pretty baller. I haven't seen the model in a long time and re-looking at it. God damn. Um what was I gonna say though? Uh, yeah, I would I wanted to run him for my with my custodians for such a goddamn long time. Um because he's he he works well with them, right? The rules. Well now I don't know what he does because custodians don't have rules. But you know what I see him running well too? Like you take him and you take um Oh, the Imperial Fist asshole. Um, oh my god, I can't remember Tom his damn Battle name. Um, right. the, the, the first Black Sigis Templar. Uh, Sigismund, <laughs> right? Um, Sigismund. Sigismund. I would take like him paired with Sigismund, not in the same squad because they Sigismund I mean, has to, to him, accept yes. challenges when given, right? And he always has to give a challenge. Exactly. But I would put him in, in an army with Sigismund because it's a cool little force multiplier where now you have two squads who individually have both characters that want to take challenges always and are better in challenges. And I saw someone do that's why I mentioned it because I saw someone do this uh, at, a, uh, at a game I, I was witnessing on YouTube where they were playing Imperial Fist with Garrow and also Sigismund. 
Uh, and it was really cool to see that because it was both like you had yeah. you made two basic bricks. You're bringing this guy because you like him. That's the reason you bring him. I'm not saying he's bad. He, he uh, he's okay. Yeah. On, he, he's, he's good, uh, to me, yeah, really, he's good, though. about. You know, he's an expensive Praetor with a little, you know, uh, with a nice weapon. But you're taking him if you like him and you bought the model and you think that's cool. I, I got no no complaints about that, but I don't think you're taking him to be that se uh, a centerpiece of your army, you know, unless you like him as a centerpiece because of who I'll he is. Centerpiece. Well, no, he, but so a warlord he can't be the centerpiece because he can't be the warlord. <laughs> oh, no. oh, okay, no, I know, but I... Uh, I like this his 40k Dan where your warlord has to be on an 80 mil base standing mm. six feet high on a pile of corpses yeah. topped by a tactical rock. Why I feel like this is a it's, recent it's model 40k that you're models. And I, it's, I, it's, it's every model. model. He's oh, okay. probably on bodies, 40k full of bodies of dead and tactical rocks. Um, no, but I like him, I like him a lot. And you know, what? I like him paired yes. with like a lot of different characters. He is loyalist. So I like him paired with like other loyalist characters. He, again, he's just a good force multiplier. You add him into a squad and you make him take challenges. Done. And he's going to hurt. It's not like he's not going to kill. He's got, what, four attacks? Uh, weapon skill six. So he's going to hit on threes or fours. Wound on threes. And then it's brutal to each hit. Oh, and he's at reach one. Does, is a that a permanent initiative? Well, uh, when you're in a this. challenge. It is, is reach one a permanent in a challenge, yes. Re reach it, reach it, you swing one faster. In so, a challenge, you're just always, yeah. Oh, so he might Duelist. as well just have, um, yeah, duelist set. Yeah, I don't know why they that's what I'm saying. I don't know why they gave him duelist, it, but he's it, initiative six, and so yeah, you get some pretty, you get hits, and it's helps. brutal. It's, it's not, it's not nice. so much yeah, the other like parts it. that are useful cool. because if you're going against someone else who's a big character, they're going to be the same weapon skill and all that kind of stuff, but it's the fact he can get that extra initiative is going to really help him. And the brutal is going to make sure that what you get through sticks. All right, he's going to be it. next on my or he's next on my order list. Yeah, he's he definitely next because he looks cool too. All right, that puts us to final thoughts. Uh, I don't remember who started last time. I want to say Steve did. So Dan was just talking. So we'll have Dan go for final thoughts first. Then we'll go to Steve. Oh yeah, I'll finish. The... Yeah. So final thoughts. Um, Death Guard are pretty damn good. Um. I mean, all the legions are pretty damn good. I think Give yourself something else. Don't allow that, that to be your phrase. They're really damn good. Yeah. Be definitive. You got a bunch yeah, of Yeah, no. Characters. Well, be no, definitive. I didn't say, uh, where's my catch? <laughs> yeah. No, I, no, they're really good. Um, their, 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 um, their Legion of Stardust rule, even though it's very long worded, is very simple and very effective. Um, and you'll pretty much always remember it because it's not something like, oh, did I charge this turn? Oh, did this, this certain condition? It's, hey, did I not run? One, or I guess, did I not activate a jump pack? Hey, wonderful. All I can shoot my heavy weapons as if I didn't move. That's just amazing. The ability to redeploy, almost kind of redeploy your army and still shoot the ability um, on threes or twos in case you're BS5. Um, their, their advanced reaction is pretty damn good. Um, uh, they have one good warlord trait, the blood of barbers. I still like their. You like it because it's one. a leadership change. I, even though it's traitor like only, it. I still like it. Yes, and I've seen leadership hurt, especially like especially with like playing Mechanicum. Um, although Mechanicum are my, at least uh, the robots are not stubborn. Uh, are they fearless? Finish your I thoughts on check this. Check that out. Oh God, I'm not gonna do that now. Um, yeah, yeah, um, their weapons are great. Uh, their toxin bombs are great. They're just, it's just an overall great legion to play. And they feel exactly how they feel in the fluff. In my, I think, mm -hmm. hmm, out of all the legions we've done so far, I'm going to argue that this Be feels careful. most like the fluffiest legion. Oh, okay. We're so close. Well, it sounds like Steve is. Well, let someone right. else disagree with who's, me, but I who's think fluffier? only because I imagine... Who's the fluffier one? Yeah, I know. Steve. Imagine the death card. There it is. I mean, yeah. obviously the Iron Warriors are oh, close. Shut the you son of a bitch. <laughs> it you i should have known it um but no like i imagine them you know walking up the battlefield you know just solid like silently shooting off round after round after round and this this plays to that and i like that i like when the legion kind of is that fluffy and also plays well with that fluff you know you don't feel bad for playing fluffy the only thing like about them that's not fluffy is the fact that they now have super 
fast vehicles. I think it's an advert. Is it the vehicles that I have to scroll up? The vehicles, vehicles get the get benefits too. They it, get so the ability too. They count as stationary. Um, it's not so cavalry. They can go vehicle. max speed and fire at full effect. Yeah, as long as it's cavalry or not artillery. Um, yeah. Huh. Like most other legions would say, you know, infantry gain this. Yeah, no, it's it's, but I'm, it's yeah. everything that's not artillery or cavalry. It is very interesting. I don't know. I'm not a Death Guard guy, so maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think uh, Blitzkrieg was their approach. I don't think they were about the lightning fast tank att- assault. Pretty sure they were more of, you know, I'm going to dig a trench. It, so it, uh, and because I read gas. through the fluff right before this. Um, Nonetheless, depending on when yeah. oh. that idea changes a little bit. In the beginning, they do absolutely talk about how, yes, they would use their vehicles to quickly get them across the battlefield to the enemy lines and th- but the idea is they wouldn't stay in them so it wasn't so much tanks but when you're thinking of transports absolutely that was a thing at least when they were uh the dusk raiders and all later when it was with mortaria and it felt a lot more of like well why do that when we can just virus bomb the planet because we don't need these people they specifically calls out how they were given to the fringes like the spots that we the worlds we don't need is the worlds they were told to take because there wouldn't be much left, if anything, in that world. Yeah, I guess it does work on... Because you know, it's not technically a run. Yeah. They just go their full speed, wherever that might be, and unload the hell. Yeah, it's weird. I, I'm looking... I had to reread it like two or three times. just. To try. Yep. Yeah, you're right. It's, that's kind of weird, though. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, if that's the case, that's the case. Um, makes the Legion even better in play. Um, oh, it's an absolutely solid legion. Their yeah. rule is so simple, but it's stealthily one of the strongest things. Because lots of weapons have the downside of you can't move and shoot. Like, things that you don't normally see, such as graviton guns, for example. They're heavy, they're blasts. You can't move and shoot them. So a lot of people just won't take them. Um, but counting a stationary means you can move and shoot, which makes um, breacher squads... A really good candidate to take graviton guns. Uh, or even yes. I think veterans can take them. Veterans can. Veterans and uh, mortalis destroyers, and those two units do have um the suspensers, but that has the range. Yeah. You fire at full range um, if you're Death Guard. Yeah, you know, if you're listening to this soon to when the episode originally releases in September, in two weeks or so, we get the rest of our heavy weapons, even your plasma kit. Excuse me, your plasma cannons. Yup. Yeah. There you go. I didn't even think of plasma cannons. Yeah. yeah. Blast heavy yeah, weapon. Found, can't okay, move you, and shoot you them. often have now good you can. range. A plasma cannon has good range. Blast cannons have good range. But the problem is your opponent, you know, if you're playing on a fair board, there should be cover and terrain. You shouldn't be able to stand in one spot and see everything. So if they really want to make sure something isn't getting hit, they can try to position themselves. Because they know if you're having to snap, they're much less worried. If it's a plasma can, you're not even attempting it. All right, well, hey, I get to reposition. I get to move around. <laughs> Ten-man last cannon squad that all of a sudden just yes. um, can move out from behind cover. Yeah. Is, is, that's, Multi-melta that's... has become really good in Death Guard. I don't give a shit. Uh, I, I'm imagining ten small blasts. They with a 19 yes. inch happy belter ring. Oh, that's right. Because you get. Oh. Because you walk seven and then yeah. you reach out 24 inches normally, 12 with the yeah. uh, armor bane. Yikes. That's really good. And it's twin linked on top of that. So if you happen to miss, then yes. I get to try again. And it's and, not and, on six. The big this part time. With, Yeah. And it's a fantastic. It's something your opponent would have to try and watch out for because normally, oh, you moved. I'm not so worried. You might get one through. Oh, no, you're going to get a good amount through now. You know, you have to be a lot more careful and cagey with where they put the things that they don't want the big guns at. Or you're not going to get a chance to shoot my big guns because I can hide them, or at least I can hide them as best I can. I can even, if I'm taking some of my own big heavy vehicle, I can even try to hide them behind that because the guys can move. And then they can go ahead and shoot. Um I didn't choose these guys as my um, ally slash other piece because of that. I really took it because of one of the rights of war, which we'll go through in a separate thing. But I am still glad. I think that some 
you can you can paint one of two ways. A lot of times you see people do very nice clean schemes for certain marmies and very dirty schemes. My dark angels are a clean scheme. Uh, I mean, I dirty up the legs and stuff like that. That's fine. But these guys, no, I'm putting, you know, all the sorts of marks, all the sort of of the extras on them to make them look filthy. And that's a lot of fun being able to paint that way. One, it's more forgiving because mud is going to look fine that you dab on them. Anything that's going to look fine as long as you don't go over the top in the wrong way. Like if you're doing um, more of either a stippling, just don't stipple way too much in one spot where it becomes overwhelming. But it's a lot more forgiving. If there's a mistake, cover it up with, you know, filth and grime and all of that. But I, I'm... I'm actually very happy with these guys. They are both strong. They have a lot of good to them. And their Legion ability lends itself very well to what they want to do, what they do from a lore perspective, and what is something that's very useful to do, especially as now we start getting more and more options for for sort of heavy weapons and all. And that'll do it for us tonight. Um, For the next episode... The plan is to continue our deep dives as we've been doing. We're now getting on to the Thousand Suns. We have a few loyalists left, but the rest are all traitors. So the plan, hopefully, for the later part of this week is to be able to release an episode on them. Um, just as I said at the top, we do want to thank anyone and everyone who does listen to the show. Remember, this is available in any podcatcher that you use. It's also available and put on YouTube for the rights of war. We've been posting those on YouTube. I do want to put them up on the podcatcher as well, but I don't want to inundate with tons of small episodes there. I just don't think the format works quite as well. So I'm probably going to cut a lot of them together. But for the moment, if you want to hear those, we have them up on the YouTube. You can go through any of those and they're all short. They're in the the range of about 20 minutes, more or less, for any of those. Um, if you are enjoying our content, you know, please do make sure you subscribe if it's on YouTube or follow us on anything else that we do. Um, like I said, if it's one of the podcatchers or anything like that. Reviews always help. If you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, you want to reach out to us. Currently, the best way is through our email, trainkickersnj at gmail.com. Um, now I've actually started working again. The school year is back up and running. So it's going to slow me down probably for about a week or two. But once things get settled, um, I have a lot of plans and things that we're trying to put together. But it's just been really busy and really tough lately trying to actually, both for myself and for the others. Um, Dan also obviously starts his teaching back up again as well. So it's been a little bit tough to get some of the things done that we've wanted to do. But Needless to say, behind the scenes, we're doing a lot of things, and we hope that you guys can start seeing those soon. All right, well, on behalf of everyone here at the show, have some good hobby and some great gaming.